welcome everybody to the Heroes Era. Thank you for joining us on this adventure. Tonight we're telling a story and we do not yet know how it will go. The players, the dungeon master, and the dice, all these will have a hand in deciding how the game unfolds. Nice. Last game, we saw the heroes ambushed by giants. Can we give a brief recap of uh, last session? Well, uh, we left the farm uh, and we started traveling with the dwarves that were helping out during the fighting back at the farm. And we basically just hitched a ride with them to start going towards uh, Dunlap's tavern. And we made a pit stop along the way to free the rest of Fausto's men. So they weren't just captured and we wouldn't just let it go on anyone else to free them. Then after that, we went up into the mountains a bit past uh, Brother John's farm. This is where we freed the men. And uh, along the way there, we had some conversations. Uh, one of the more notable things that only Vincent knows is that he was handed a, a magical rock that had chaos energy in it from what I remember. And uh, we don't know anything about that, so we just have to act like... That's just not there. And then while going up a, <laughs> going up a steep uh, road or going towards a road, we encountered a garrison of about seven armored uh, hobgoblins. And we managed to talk our way around it by using the battle map that uh, Kondrazul gave us and by using a little bit of uh, magic too to put a little inscribing there saying that we have orders to move north or something to get us past them and with a little bit more convincing they let us go and then we got out of dodge before they could figure out that they, we tricked them oh and, yeah we did that <laughs> yeah because they are going to get angry at us indeed <laughs> and then we went up to uh, a steep incline with our wagon and a uh, boulder started falling down from one of the ridges to our right with a bunch of trees in the way. Turns out there were three giants that were just ambushing us and many people were almost captured and uh, stolen. Uh, our mule got decimated, immediately got took by like one giant and he ran off in the forest with him. Gary. Uh, yeah, poor Gary. Uh, I forget who was uh, grabbed by that giant, but if I remember correctly, Kevin was one, which is funny because he has a recurring theme of getting captured. Oh, also Kevin's with us because he managed to convince us to let him with to let him come by. Didn't didn't do you get picked up by a giant? I was yeah. the very last one to get picked up. Uh, it was it was it was Kevin, then one of the dwarves. I forget who. Uh, and then I got captured, and thanks to uh, a clutch play by Xander, who ended up getting nat 20 but with a boulder, which killed him like pretty thoroughly. He he had the roll death saving throws, and he got a nat 20 and got immediately back up through a dissonant whispers at the giant that was carrying me so I could go free. I jumped down the steep incline towards safety. Right. And, and he buggered off. And he just started running uh, away. And then the third one that was still throwing boulders at us, that was still on top of the ridge, also ran away. And now we're stuck here with no mule, a broken cart, a very injured bard, and a very mm -hmm. injured dwarf, uh, and a guy who has a broken leg. That's right. Yeah, that pretty much sums it all up pretty nicely, actually. <laughs> That's where we're at. And it's not a great position. Yeah, that covers uh, pretty much everything in my notes that I was going to touch on. I also named my dog and then started talking to him with, with my magic ring. His name's Kingston. Right. Very good name. And Vincent also uh, met his familiar Rolo. I believe it was either last session or the session before, but that relationship is developing as well. Yes. Still not sure how I ended up with an imp or what's going on with that. But, you know, I'm rolling with it. Rolling with it. Ah. Oh, there <laughs> <you go. laughs> Is Rolo <laughs> present on the material plane with us? 
Um, oh God, I'm trying to remember. I he doesn't go away once he's brought, unless you want him to, or he dies. Yeah. Well, I I can I can dismiss him into a pocket plane. Um, he probably would be out and about. Yeah, I think yeah, because I think the last I talked to him, he he said he wanted to stick around outside. So I told him he needed to stay Raven form, which he was being real slick about that. And I got to talk to him about that. But uh, um, yeah, I told him he could I told him he could stay out as long as he stayed in his Raven form. And he was he was hopping around the trees and following us. Okay. Yeah, I remember uh, Humnalda had mentioned something about seeing uh, or the strange company that you keep. Yeah. And that was after you had noticed Rolo uh, shifting from Raven to Imp momentarily. So. Yeah, and I played. I tried to play it off and said, "Yes, Silverado is a very weird guy," but you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. That is not uh, not a lie. I mean, it's not untrue. Yeah, exactly. Yep, it's, <laughs> it's correct. So the path has been taking you all along the river. Your wagon was destroyed uh, as you tried to move it out of the way of these boulders that were hurled by the giants, and the party is in disarray. Uh, all the dwarves are huddled together trying to recover. Um, they're trying to search for whatever rations might be recoverable from the smashed up cart. Thragnown has mentioned and uh, put it up for discussion that perhaps you all should find a different path, a more subtle path. Um, and so what are your first instincts? We can start with Xander. Uh, I can't imagine that, um, just from not knowing where we're really going, going off the beaten path. I don't. I mean, I'm sure that that might get us out of sight, but I'm not sure it's going to get us where we need to be. That's kind of yeah. where I'm thinking. Uh, which is the lesser of two evils: Go, going the direct path or going off 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 the road and I don't getting lost or well we we don't know where we're going but the dwarves that are with us might ah that is true you know, I mean we're, they're true. they're going home basically and, so good and point come, yeah and come tomorrow I can ask a bird to uh I can basically say like is there anywhere safe around here once I get my speak with animals back and you also have Rolo that can scout as well I was just gonna say yeah you don't even have to waste your your uh spell for that I can just have Rolo peek around. Um, so maybe that's a question we should bring back to the dwarves. Um, I might ask is who who's conscious? Thragnown has a broken leg. When Nalda is KO'd, but stabilized. Yeah, she's um, not dying. Bruli and Brukov, are they? I, I'm wondering if I could have a conversation with them if they know their way around. If they want to go off 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 roading they're gonna have to lead the way are they okay with that Boruli has the broken leg um thragnown is just hurt was very badly injured in an ambush so he's been slowly regaining his um essentially his life force or whatnot right on and so yeah he's still pretty badly beaten up um Umaldo just... was just smashed by that boulder so we have Deathida and uh, Strodrake and Brukoth. Okay. Um, I might approach uh, Strodrake, being being the wizardly type. He might be um, a little more intelligent than the other ones. I'm not saying that out loud. It's in my mind. Uh, <laughs> to ask him, um, clear, clearly this road path is well known, and obviously uh, I don't know if it's patrolled or some some somebody somebody or something's keeping an eye on it. Um, we're wondering if you guys might be able to suggest an alternate route, keeping in mind that we have two or three companions that are not going to be moving too quickly or up and down, you know, changing scales. If we're going to be climbing or scaling anything, they're not going to be going up and down very easily. And you had approached death at a uh, Strodrake. Oh, Strodrake. I'm sorry. It's okay. Strodrake um, says, well, now we're in the Hobgoblin land, so uh, 
this would be the path that we would take. Um, he says, let's see here. This is the Dalarin Caillou River. And this road should take us all the way to Dunlop's Tavern. But we are in enemy lands, so I'm not sure what to suggest here. That's kind of my feeling too. That you know, we're, no matter what path we go, I feel like we're gonna we might run into something, or we have we run the risk of running into something. Um, what do you guys think, Vincent Silverado? Boy, uh, if not for the injuries, I would say the woods. But yeah, I yeah. feel like we're gonna have a hard time traversing any makeshift path right now that's kind of my thinking too as soon as Especially we go off the rails just from our map it's, it's very rocky i see a, i see a lot of climbing or descending which is going to be hard enough for the three of us let alone three other injured companions i think our best bet is to stay the path try to keep a low profile keep our head on a swivel i can keep rollo out keep and watch ahead of us um you know, maybe uh, um, um, uh, stay watch. No, I've, I just forgot your your warg's name. <laughs> Kingston? Kingston. Kingston. Sorry. How could you forget? I, dude, I don't know. Um, yeah, but maybe maybe Kingston can kind of you know prowl out ahead. You know, keep keep try to keep our eyes open for anything, and like I said, just keep a low profile and try to. Yeah. Just try to slip through, you know. It also seems like a bit of a more direct route as well. I mean, if we go off the yeah. rails, it might take us longer to get where we're going. Yeah, yeah and let's be real. True. I mean, there's, there's, we got dwarves here that need medical attention. Like, this is yeah. not the time to go off roading, I don't think. Yeah. As you all are discussing what to do, <clears throat> um, a trumpet blast sounds throughout the canyon. Awesome. Oh, that could be Goblin. The trumpet blast is answered by another. Uh, mm. from, from the north. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should take some cover. See what happens here. Y yes, I'd say cover would be good right yeah. now. Yeah, can we try to dip off the path and just sort of hunker down, see what's yeah. happening? We can have Rolo see who it is. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out. So yeah, I'd like to to dip down off the path, um, have Rolo perch up in the trees in in the area. And then I'll just um, put my hand on on uh, on Silverado's shoulder, and I'm gonna go deaf and blind and and watch through Rolo's eyes. Okay. So, um, will you all please make for me um, a stealth check to try to get off the road and remain hidden, find somewhere aye, to hide. Aye. Oh boy, here I go stealthing again. Oh, look at this, guys. 19, 21, and 16. Why am I the one with the plus five, always the lowest? And so now um, and half of the dwarves moment. are injured and the other half are helping them. Uh, helping them to clear the path and find a place in the bushes. Um, and here, uh, Vincent, let me show you something um, in your journal here. Let me edit okay. this real quickly. As uh, Rolo goes into the um, up into the sky, as you had requested to get a bird's eye view, um, you will see in your journal what he is able to see. Okay. And I will uh, switch this over um, just for the sake of everybody. Now. As you're looking through the eyes of Rollo, um, hobgoblins quickly man these ballistas atop the tower and other hobgoblins begin to arm themselves. They're appearing from tents on the northwest side of the river um, and they're coming out of the ballista wall 
that guards the southeast of the river. So uh, looking at this image, you guys will, you know, are south of here around a small bend. <clears throat> and the river here passes underneath this bridge and continues northward. Um, there are two wagons full of goods traveling either way on the bridge. There are around 30 hobgoblins who appear well armed and they are forming in two groups on the southeast side of the river. Um, there are around 10 in each group and the remaining 10 are moving to guard the southeast wall. The 20 or so of these hobgoblins in two groups begin going separate ways. One group begins to make their way south up the mountain following a small trail and disappearing beneath the canopy of pine needles. <clears throat> the other group begins moving at a quick pace trotting along the river uh, trail. Okay. And I tell, I tell you guys all of that as I see it. So... Oh. It's coming coming our direction. Sorry, I kind of lost perspective. Are there... Uh... Yes, huh. the river is on the west side of you. And so uh, the path that one group is following is this river trail that you all have been that you okay. all have been following. So I got a group of 10 hobgoblins coming over or more. Well, that seems like the road's a no-go once we wait for them to pass and we think we're hidden enough. Xander, uh, can you check the chat in roll 20? Yep. Oh. Oh, shoot. Oh, what a strange text. I don't know if you intended for us to see that, but we do. You'll be able to see it. I have, I can. I don't know. I don't have Discord open, okay. so. Guys, yeah. I think we need to get in, get get in the water and uh, and and try and try and hide or something from there. I think that's our best bet. Something. So there's something. Something in my mind is saying to, for us to get in the water. I don't know who, but. Yep, that's trustworthy. Let's go. Hey, I mean, what are our options? Xander, as you mentioned this, behind you at the river, um, there is a beautiful figure of sculpted water. Uh, it appears as a woman, and there's a break in the ice that covers the river. Um, she beckons you. Do we see her? Yes, you all see wow. her. Okay, so it's not a hallucination. Okay. No, okay. All um, right. Uh, so I see like a a a, wom a watery woman figure in the water where and then the other the the, the river is kind of iced over. Yes, but there's parts where that where the ice is broken. The shore, yes, and kind of beckoning you. And there is a broken SMR? area of the river at her feet. All right, I'll. All right, I'm I'm, I'm gonna go because I'm a I'm hurting, and uh, all right, I don't think I need okay. to be. Okay, shoot. Yeah. yeah, sure. Let's go. Why not? I'm a nature boy. Let's do Come it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Yeah. Get the dwarves up. Get them moving. Let's do some nature. <laughs> As you approach, the figure speaks to you and says, The mother has asked me to cover you in a blanket of ice. I have stopped the waters of my river for you. If you would save yourself, come now. The hobgoblins are all around you. Wow. Okay. Let's do it. Um, I'll help the Thank help the dwarves you, down with us. Help the dwarves down with us, and we'll all. Uh, I'll take. I'll take heed, and um, yeah. Yeah. Seems like a blessing in disguise somehow. As you all are hurrying towards this, um, just a moment here. You see hobgoblins coming up the path to the south. <clears throat> and they spot you uh, just as you are, I'm assuming, going into uh, this hollowed out frozen river. Yeah. And uh, one of the hobgoblins who is running, sprinting in your direction, appears to be Neb Nedmebdem. Oh, is that dude? Oh, hey. And he says, you think <laughs> oh, you'll make a fool of me? And he's just sprinting so in your direction. We weren't entirely lying. Let's say, Absolutely. 
I mean, apparently we can. <laughs> Look, I like him, man, but don't don't make me do something I'm going to regret. Absolutely, we will. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so to the right side here is uh, the entrance to the river. This kind of represents the river frozen over. Um, right. And so this water figure or watery figure is just kind of beckoning to you all as you are rushing to enter. Uh, the dwarves are hurrying as best they can, and I'm cool. going to make a roll for the dwarves here. Oh, my goodness. Hey. Have, hey. Rolled a 20 there. The, Not 20. That's great. They must nice. have just adrenaline, adrenaline surging through their veins as they uh. sprint into this uh, – into the frozen river. Praise be to whoever is looking after us, guys. That's it's just... nature, apparently. Yeah. So oh, as sorry. you enter, um, the watery figure comes after you, um, and she waves her hand, and as she does, she becomes a wall of water and then ice that closes the entrance to this river. And so now you all are beneath a ceiling of ice. Um, mm. The wall is closed behind you. You can hear the frustration of the hobgoblins uh, chipping away at the ice with their weapons. Wow. Let's get a move on. Let's yeah. get that. We got to go. We just, we've been given the gift of time. Yeah. Let's, uh, how do we make use of this? So we're kind of at the mouth of this on that, uh, on the right side of, of them of this map that we're looking at. Yes, and um, I meant to kind of blur out some of the edges, so this um, area here will continue northward cool. uh, up, the, up the river, up the belly of the river. Right. And... Just in case, just in case of uh, random pot shots, because I'm a big fan of taking pot shots at people running away, um, I'll uh, use a bonus at some point and just throw a healing word on myself just to hopefully, uh, idea. I know it's not going to heal myself fully, but um, it might uh, protect me from a random arrow coming our way. So where are we on this map? Yeah, there. Uh, I'm at five. Uh, I've healed myself for four hits. I'm at five. So you're essentially here in this area beneath the river. Mm -hmm. um, the okay. map is just kind of to give an illustration. At this point, you see the dried uh, riverbed opening up before you. The ceiling of ice drips slightly. And um, let's see. There's also a school of fish flopping about on the dry riverbed. No. Uh, no so we're kind of under the, under the river, right? And it's frozen, but the, yeah. and the water is lower? We, is we right? have, we there have is a no water. We have a There's frozen no roof over us. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Because if awesome. we if we were to breathe this, like if this lady gave us water breathing, that would also work. But it would be a very cold water. Right. Which would not be great because we would probably die of hypothermia. Right. Cool. Okay, so cool. there is clearly one way to go, which is forward in this river. Awesome. And uh, you do hear the hobgoblins hacking away at this ice behind you. Surely awesome. the, the ice won't last forever against weapons of steel and iron. Let's go. Right on. Let's double time as best, as best we can. So the dwarves are kind of all kind of helping each other, I guess. I mean, they're probably they're stronger than us, probably, in, in helping them along. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. So I was going to say, because I wouldn't be much help in, in that department. Strength is not my area of expertise, or uh, I don't know. I, I'm not a strong guy. I will make a roll right, for cool. the dwarves here, which will be a 14. Right on. That sounds like a good. So far, they're not a hindrance. Uh, Kevin is not injured either, I believe, and he is at your side. Uh, Yo, Kevin, ain't, ain't this crazy we're underneath the river right now, man? We where's, got a water woman. Where's King, Where's Kingston? Kingston's right by me, man. He's 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 on my side. He's my pal. This is kind of awesome. Okay, um, as you all continue wow. under the frozen river. Um, you hear the frenzied shout of hobgoblins enter the cavern and you can assume that they have broken through the frozen barrier. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Xander, in your head you hear uh, as you're continuing 
The mother blesses you, Xander, for watching her children. And it is in the same voice of this guardian or custodian of this river or whatever has granted you this passage. Wow. Awesome. Who, is, who have you looked over? Uh, yeah, Xander, that, that, that woman back there, that a friend of yours? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Well, uh, I don't know, man. I Tell her we owe her one. <laughs> definitely um i mean i've always been looking after people that grew up the way i did but i've also been looking out for number one a lot so i'm not really sure hey man uh you can't I'm take care gonna, of anybody else if you don't take care of yourself we'll figure we'll figure it out pretty soon i'm sure right now i'm just thankful um yeah Me and too, uh buddy. wow yeah i'm and uh I've kind of got this constant look like I'm doing hard math on my face. Just trying to like remember <laughs> real hard. Like what, what, what did I, I do? It? Yeah, this is good though. I'll take it. I'll take it and go. I'm going to owe somebody and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Let's, uh, but let's keep hightailing it guys. I don't know. I don't know hey, how yeah. much we can hand up against these, these goblins, these hobgoblins. Mm -hmm. I somehow all of our images have swapped on the feed, so I will transition that real quickly. <laughs> uh, love it. So yes, very good, guys. And somebody indeed has your best interests at heart, it would seem. However, um, your problems have not, not all been solved for you because you hear a deep rumbling that begins to shake the cavern. Awesome. Ah, Giants yes. are back. So great. Can you all make athletics check, please? Athletics <laughs> checks. <laughs> all right. I'm so athletic, you guys. So athletic. Yeah, I got a one to that. Yeah. Twelve. Eighteen. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, hopefully. Okay, With my sorry. plus zero. Don't worry, I'll catch up. Probably. That's better than my, that's better than my minus one, Vincent. Okay, wait. Here we go. Cringe. Seven. Yep, that's what I was that's thinking. A, that's a strength Ooh, save. I rolled a seven. Oh, I roll. Oh, it's the same thing. Oh no, is it's it? not. My athletics is zero, so eight. <laughs> well, although the uh, floor of the of the riverbed is, um, you know, it's solid, a little slick, but also some of the rocks begin to slip away under your feet as you are running, and Xander, you stumble a bit. Behind you, Enough. you hear the crashing of water, and it begins to grow louder than the frenzied shouts of the hobgoblins. And you see, just at the edge of your vision, around a, a bend in the river, water crashing around the corner, and it is carrying the host of hobgoblins, who are all no. struggling to stay afloat. You know, we've got to go surfing under a river. Is it carrying them towards us, though? Yes, indeed it is. <laughs> yeah, let's let's what surf on some of. goblins. So, ahead of you all, um, there's a wall of ice, and then to your right, a cave in the stone that goes deep into the earth. It is the only way we, to go. I mean, I don't, we got yeah, dwarves with us, choice. guys. Yeah, we got the dwarves with us. We got the dwarves. Yeah, I hightailed to the cave. Uh, yeah, I'll pick myself up from. Uh... I'll help anybody that needs it because I can run real fast. So far, the dwarves are keeping up okay, and Kevin is at your side. He's pretty athletic himself. Uh, cool. Kingston is a little bit concerned, but he's following your lead at this point. You guys have developed something of a bond, becoming uh, hunting partners at this point. Don't worry, Kingston. This is a day in the life. Happens all the time, for yeah. sure. The water begins to overtake you slightly. Um, you have been running down this cave for several moments, and you are all swept into a fury of water and warriors as the river is filling itself again. And yeah, now you'll find yourself... I don't know if you've ever been in like a water slide. Sure. <laughs> But it's kind of like that, and you're struggling to stay in front of the water and, you know, not get caught up by the rocky crevices here along the sides of this cavern. But the entire cavern is filled with rushing water, 
And so if everybody, please, for me, will make one more athletics check here or an acrobatics check, your choice. Uh, Oh, acrobatics. Acrobatics, I, acrobatics I can do. I got a nat 20. I'm in there. I am good. I'm surfing 19. on a goblin. Uh, 11. Okay, okay. Um, Xander, select a piece of armor or a weapon uh, that you will be trying to keep hold of. Uh one of my probably one of my short swords maybe no they're probably sheath uh it's probably i'd probably say probably my armor yeah okay the armor is just creating a lot of drag in the water here and making it impossible for you to keep your footing or find any grips uh just with the way the the current is ripping at it so please make a dc 15 deck saving throw to try to okay. uh take your armor off all right. 22. Well done. Um, and you're able to take your armor off and also kind of fold it up well enough to hold it close Ooh. to your chest. And okay. you do not end up dropping that piece. Wow, you guys uh, rolled really well. That's good for you. Let's mm -hmm. see here. Where this he... happens, I'm always worried about what's going to happen later because the rolls work themselves out. <laughs> Yeah, the universe always balances. Where is the uh, where's the what was that guy's weird name? What Nag Nag Nemedin? Nem Nem yeah. yeah. Where is like he in this torrent of water? Is he doing all right? You see him in there. He's he's uh, deeper in than you guys. The hobgoblins are having more trouble. They're all wearing heavy plate mail and such. Sure, mm. yeah, mm. Uh, idiots. So, I'm well. gonna keep an eye on him just in case. Okay, noted. I, 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 I want to make sure that I can... I want to make sure I can do something with him later. Now, as you all are at the forefront of this surge of water, you can see before you that the cave expands and there's a drop, a sudden drop in front of you. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh. Although you may try to brace uh, yourself, there is not much you can do against this torrent of water. And the wow. rapids just surround you and engulf you, and they throw you over the edge of a cliff. Uh, luckily, there's a great pool below you. Wow. And so on this map is not demonstrated the waterfall that's rushing out of this cavern um, because it might not necessarily have been there immediately, but it is in this situation. And so the water is surging out of, if you all can see this cavern here, the... Yeah. Uh, top right cave and sort of begins to fill this pool or feed into this pool below here. Right the river on, okay. continues southward. Wow. Also, you see come shooting out of uh, <laughs> this waterfall, um, you notice Dethida. And then you see several hobgoblins as well. All of you see that. Now, you might have um, very, um, what am I trying to say? You might have, you know, a, a very d difficulty of time. That is not well worded. Um, you, uh, you, <laughs> what is the word? <laughs> you are either struggling or not in this torrent of water. Um, and that would be reflected by the saves that you made essentially before this and what you are all trying to do. So, Picture Silverado and Vincent landing well enough. Probably Silverado, perhaps very gracefully. Three um, point. And Xander does all he can to keep hold of his armor and plunges deep into the water. Uh, comes up coughing a bit. So, so is he is he under the water or is he is he just got put in there? Yes, you're all in the water here in this big. Um, big body of water and the water continues to pour out from above it's a waterfall that's just surging into this uh now larger cavern and the wow. current will begin begin to take you all all right can we get now, to the edges should we try and get to the edges you can try to get sure. to the edges yeah or do we want to just let it take us i don't know man <laughs> i don't know where this goes you know <laughs> yeah 
Well, here's the question. If we get to the edge, is there anything over there? Is it like just just sheer cliffs? Is there true, yeah. some sort of a pathway or something like that? Like, well, it appears lady. to be a uh, sheer cavern side. Um, you might be oh, able okay, to find so some much. kind of footings, but there doesn't appear to be a path along the side. Well, I mean, I don't really want to, these hobgoblins to catch up with us. Maybe we just let the, the point our toes and let the current take us. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know, That's man. probably the best option. Are you going to be good with that, Xander? You look like you're struggling a little bit over there, buddy. <laughs> Figure Do it out, that. dude. Something Do it all like, right. You act like you've never rode a raging river off of a waterfall before. I mean, uh, what is this, your I first know. time? I know, man. Jeez. I know. It's first time for everything. It's all good. The next one. The next one, I'll have it down. I promise. Next one. Yeah. Yeah. The second one's way easier. That's it. That's fine. And indeed, the uh, rivers continue as, or the rapids continue as the river swiftens. And will you all please make an athletics check as you attempt to swim in this river? All right. Athletics. N. Perfectly average. 14. Perf perfectly average. I rolled 14. I got nice. 13. I just get the dice, so. Dice are nice. Okay. Up ahead, you see two banks. Um, on the right side, you see Dethida and Strodrake. They're struggling to get to their feet. Strodrake is extending his staff into the water. On the left bank, you see four hobgoblins all crawling ashore, trying to um, just catch their breath, gather their bearings, um, checking on each other to see if they've survived and they're looking up the river as well is 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 nandodan there or is he still in the river he is there he's on the bank so we want to go right sorry mm. i think well i make sure everybody's safe first we could try to start getting onto a bank that doesn't have hobgoblins on it yeah let's do that Oh, nice. Ew. And Silverado, so mm. behind you is Kingston. He's scratching at the wall, trying to stay near you, but he's in quite a panic. So as mm. the three of you scramble to shore, um, The dwarves lend a hand, and you're all able to come ashore if you're trying to go to the same shore as the dwarves. I believe yeah. that's what I've heard. Yes. So, yeah, for sure. And so, Silverado, you're going to need to do something to uh, save your uh, wolf here. Okay. Let's see. What do I have here? Nice. He's being swept away by the river, uh, trying to claw at the rocks, and just not able to catch his grip. So if you don't act swiftly, he might be swept away. I take, what do I have here? Uh, hmm. We could human chain. Yeah, I just. Uh, what if I just help you pull them up? Yeah, I just, I just, I have, I just put, I have my knees on the little ridge right there and I just start reaching and trying to grab Kingston so he doesn't float away. I'll help, I'll help him. Same. I'll help too. Yeah. Daisy, Daisy chain it. Yep. Okay. I I felt like that was assisting Kingston, so Kingston rolled, and he makes it safely ashore. Oh, nice. All nice right. Job, nice. gentlemen. Good job, guys. Everybody. Dog saved, is still the alive. Baby Gotta think quick, man. That's it. It's fast thinking. Good job. Well, I mean, Xander already killed his mule, so you know. Hey, the <laughs> goblin, the goblin. Or the, you couldn't take care of your pet? Excuse the hill me? Giant, the hill giant took him away. Yeah, Look. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was unconscious. Vincent's pet may be unkillable, literally, and my pet may be very ver very vicious, but you could take care of a mule? Man, I think Gary, Gary was a bit yeah. more expendable, unfortunately. My pet, my pet is very, is very much unkillable. He just, It's just a minor inconvenience for me. How so. dare you <laughs> say that about Gary? I, th I think I made, the, I made the farmer's mistake of naming naming him. <laughs> yeah. Uh well as you Okay, so we're we're on the I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Uh, no so we're on the, the opposite side of the we're on the 
on Got the opposite right. side of the hobgoblins, correct? Yes, sir. Can they see? Do, do they see us over there? Uh, yes, they have noticed you. Uh, you all can place your tokens if you like. Where's my that? Where's my token? There I am. Where Where do I be at though? Hmm. Doesn't want me to. Where am I? I don't even see my token. Oh, you'll need to like you can drag it from your. Uh, can oh, you drag what? it from your character sheet or from a. Uh... Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Yep, totally. Oh, You're right. By the way, Xander, I'm now you. I'm, I'm taking control. Oh, nice. I can't. Uh, can I control you? Nope. No, I. I'm not even in there. I. I'm trying to drag myself in there, but it's not. Doing it. Nice. Oh, I see how it is. That's not letting me drag mine in either. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't even know that was an option until recently. So, <laughs> let me see if I can. Get <laughs> I see here. myself moving around. <laughs> Xander and I share like a mind link, and he doesn't That's know it. it. I don't. You didn't know Xander is your familiar. <laughs> So I was like, oh, I can't con wait. That. Try to control me. See if you can control me, because I can control you. No. Can, can no. anyone control me? Because oh. I can't. I can't control you. All right, now I can control myself. Okay. I can't move anything. I clearly am a familiar. Don't worry, I'll move you. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Just give me your character sheet, and I'll play for you. Don't worry. We have about problems. Here. <laughs> Sorry. So everybody can move themselves now. We're good. Yes. Oh, I still can't. Oh, you can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're my you character. the one who could. Let's see. No. Oh, yeah. What's no. that? That's strange. How the S Silver Silverado's moving himself around, M moving everybody. There, I can now. We're good. Yeah, give me control of Vincent as well. <laughs> <laughs> I always oh, play goodness. everybody. Yeah, but but he's just gonna take it tonight. We're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna take the night off, <laughs> guys. Just take a take a quick tea. I'll uh, I'll finish this battle pretty quick. <laughs> Neb Neb Dem. Uh, shouts across the river. There. And then he picks up his ally and kind of smacks him on the chest. And his ally pulls his bow out, which he had been using to navigate the rocks. And somehow it did not break, and neither did the bowstring. Oh, look and it. Look he, it. he will begin dem -dem. to prepare to loose an arrow. Will everybody roll initiative, please? Uh oh As we're doing this, I just want to look at nem neb neb deb deb and just be like, man, you look like an idiot again. <laughs> yeah, he does. Okay. For for reference, if some point in there I had a chance to save somebody that wasn't a dwarf, I would save him. I would like take off his armor so that he wouldn't drown in the water and be like, "You're with us now. Come on, join the club." That's very Initiative very kind six. of you. We got a six. We got nineteen for Silverado. We got five for Vincent. And did we see, so the cavern does continue on? The cavern continues a bit deeper on your side, you can see. And the current's strong enough that it'll be, a cha it'll be challenging for them to come to swim across. Uh -huh. Yes, going either way, it'd be quite a challenge to cross, I imagine. You need, like, to throw a rope across and, like, pull them. Okay. Dope on a rope. Mm -hmm. No, thanks. Well, I have hemp rope. Silverado, you can act first. Hey, I don't want to fight you guys. I, I I think we're cool, man. All right. Like I don't want to. I don't want. Are we cool? I ask Nem and Dem. Not cool. Not cool. I was going to save you. How dare you? Looks like you need saving. Oh whatever. I just shoot him with my bow. Okay. Go ahead. I, dare you. I try to make Ooh. friends with you, but you don't take it. No one ever wants to be friends. Nine damage. <laughs> uh. These fools. They never want to be Ooh. friends. Yeah, and I'm just going to start um, backing towards that, that little exit that we have. Okay. Xander, yeah. you're up. All right. Where was it? Sorry, you can take your move action too, Silverado. 
Yeah, that's what right I was on. doing. Right on. Dang, you're fast. I am very fast. Yes. <laughs> I'll uh, yell out at Nedbedin. Ned, Ned, Nedbedin. Somewhere around here, you're depriving a village of its idiot, <laughs> and hit him with a vicious mockery. <laughs> he takes one. He, he gets a saving throw to take one psychic damage. <laughs> Can you even half that? Save. No, it's just it's a uh, one or none. Cool. And he has disadvantage on his next attack. He just kind of grabs his head. Ah. And he grabs the man what a who's weird still at his, insult. Still at his foot or still at his feet. He grabs the archer that he had already lifted up and he begins to pull them deeper into the cavern here away from you. Oh. And I will reveal some of the areas here. A little bit. I will, uh, I will move to join Silverado. Oh, this is going to be a converging fight. Mm. <laughs> mm. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm going to try. I'm going to try and see something for my next turn. This uh... one, as he's darting away, takes a shot at um, Death Eta. The arrow flies over her head. Yes. He begin. He continues running. Hmm. And they've disappeared around the corner here. Uh, Vincent, you're up. Hmm. Hey, where are you going? Oh, man. Hold do, on. Do we want to... For real, do we want to follow them or do we want to go our own way? I, no, uh, one, uh, no one here yeah, has a chance. Yeah, let's go our own way. Okay. All right. And I'll just be like, bye. I can use oh, a key bye. point and jump to the other side of the river and just start chasing them down. Well, that's what I was saying, because I could misty step across if we wanted to, but you're right, you guys are you guys are pretty rocked. So Yeah. We'll be cool. Yeah, we'll be we'll be fine. I'm still trying to figure out how we got down here. We were we went from let's go hide in the woods to Hey, water lady, running, run, take running us down, away. Yeah. Something cool happened. Some, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little <laughs> bit excited about that, actually. Cool. Dude, I could totally jump across. Some moistened totally. dirt tried to lob a scimitar at you. So anyway. if I understand, you all are planning on kind of retreating into your own cave here. Yeah. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yes. Okay. Um, let me make Kingston controlled by you here. Woo! Oh, yeah. I got a dog. How fast is he? What's his movement speed? Same as yours. All but right. Faster when you're hunting. <laughs> fast pals. And um, the, let's see here. <clears throat> so the hobgoblin takes his shot at you as they're all retreating there. There is no sign of Thragnaun. There is no sign of Baruli. No sign of Umnalda. No sign oh. of Kevin. Brukoth's oh. leg is badly mangled. And um, as you all are retreating, it appears that Dethida has already discovered that his leg will need to be amputated. I have a sword. Dethida uh, rises and says that she is going to search the rest of the cavern. So, Dethida is... Alright, let's do a roll call real quick. Who? Which of the goblins... Or not goblins, which of the uh, dwarves are here? Baruli and Dethida? Baruli, Strodrake, and Dethida. So, Strodrake is going to be represented by the wizard-looking one, because he is a wizard. Right on. But he gives okay. his staff to... Um, he has given his staff to Brukoth. Bru and now Dethida has um, analyzed Brukoth and has decided that she is interested in exploring the cavern. Not sure how she can really aid uh, Brukoth. And Strodrake is by his side, um, who he seems to be, be again, he seems to be preparing to do something on behalf of Brukoth. 
Rukoth Death of Sturdrake, one of which has a leg that needs to be amputated. Yes. Kingston okay. made it also. Oh, boy. No Kevin. Yeah, where's Kevin? He's not with us. He's, uh... Is Kevin dead? Kevin, Kevin finally died? Kevin. Kevin's dead, okay. <laughs> Out of all the kidnapping attempts and goblins trying to kill him, he dies by water. Yeah, we're missing water slide. Kevin, Thragnown, Humnalda, and Boruli. So while mm. the water parks may just make you sign a waiver, guys. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, shall we? Yeah, Let's go. Is it, is it is it dark? I'll spark up a torch. Strodrake says, "I'll have to take care right. of his leg right now." Uh, here, now? And he begins to make a small fire and heat his his knife. Uh, he, he's right. made the fire with magic. He's concentrating and heating this knife on a small I'll, flame. Uh, I'll uh, I'll look around for like a piece of driftwood or a stick or something, something for him to bite down on, and I'll help hold. Uh, I'll help down hold down Brukov. You know, um. Try, I'll, um Sorry, uh, just is there anything? Is there a chance of anything um, in the? I have a healer's kit that might help sedate him a little bit, or like, at least try and take the edge off while this. I got happens. some alcohol. <laughs> so oh, we have I've... alcohol, and then you also have a, a special kind of root that would probably be good for him to chew down on. That might numb, okay. him, numb him overall a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not sure what it would be, but I'm sure it's in there. I'll do that. I'll do that, and I'll I'll, I'll help hold him down while. Uh, yeah, Stro Drake does the hard the hard part. I could have Rolo sting him and possibly knock him unconscious. Oh. That would help him greatly, so he doesn't have to feel any pain whatsoever. Stro Drake's just heating this knife. He begins to lick his finger and touch the knife to test how hot it is. That's probably not a bad idea, uh, Vincent. Although, then how we have to we'll, we'll be carrying him, I guess. We'll Brukov is looking him. around, panicked. Biting oh, wait, down. No, no, the the M form doesn't have the unconscious thing. Never mind. Okay. Stordrake, do you want to cut his leg off? Brukov begins breathing much more deeply after the prospect of him well, being I'm... knocked unconscious is off the table. <laughs> I'll uh, uh, when I see him, we see can him still knock getting... him unconscious. <laughs> yeah, I as can I do it. Him, as I see him getting worked up, I'm gonna start uh, trying playing some sooth- soothing music just to. See if I can help calm him down, or, or, you know, even put him in some sort of trance or something like that. Just tr- something to take his mind away from what is about to happen. Okay, Xander, will you make a performance check, and Vincent, will you make a strength check as you were holding him down? And I tie uh, some rope right above where he's gonna cut as like a tourniquet. Yes. Can you make a medicine check, please? Okay. As I'm as I'm uh, playing this on my lute, I'll. Uh, I'll Ooh. throw in a few a few of those power chords, major strengths. chords I learned back at uh, Hawkins Farm. Very nice. Got 18th strength to hold him down. I got seven medicine, so oh, I don't nice. do it. Oh, and that 20 to calm him. For a performance check, yeah, 25. Strodrake says, I'm sorry, my brother. And he begins just sawing into his flesh, unfortunately, having to do this. Brukoth screams out and after a few moments passes out um, and Strodrake finishes the job. It's very gruesome, very bloody. Um, Hopefully Brukoth will be able to survive and uh, Strodrake burns um, the amputated limb uh, to prevent it from bleeding out that is all that he can think to do in this situation cauterize the wound yeah so i'm not sure if that's actually a good idea medically so don't try this at home kids it's it stops the bleeding (laughs) so it doesn't bleed out but the nerve endings get pretty destroyed at that point well after he's done that i'll use i've got a healer's kit so maybe i'll I'll use my healer's kit and see if i can make sure at least that uh there's no nothing that's fester looks like it could be infected or anything like that after after he's cut the wound, cut the leg off. Wow. Welcome. All things considered, you've done a pretty clean job here. Um, it, you've done your best. It looks like he'll probably pull through, but you never know. Um, so as this is all transpiring and uh, kind of the chaos of this moment passes, 
the uh, shouts, the echoes of the shouts are, you know, still echo, uh, fading throughout the cavern. And across the river, you see just these hobgoblins backing up slowly. And they're firing arrows in front of them, the three of them. Neb Neb Dem uh, is, does not seem to have a bow that's functioning. He just has a, one a bow whose bowstring has snapped. So he is using that as a staff to kind of command his men who seem to be quite terrified. And they are all backing up, taking their shots here. All right. Well, wow. uh, I'll bet my money. That's the others. Because whatever, whatever's getting attacked by them is a um, friend of ours, right? Oh, unless it's a hill giant. Mm. Don't worry, I have or a plan for that, let, too. We let them and whatever it is battle it out, and then we'll deal with whatever's left over. I take... Sure. And two of the hobgoblins look across the river to where you all are, uh, seeming to look at your position. Hey, guys. I having would... trouble? You all might want to be very careful. Mm. And so as you are watching this unfold, you see... I might, I might try and take some cover at least while, if this, while, while you guys are doing that. If I can kneel around... Look, there's some like some boulders or rocks around like here. I might try and take cover. Yeah, I'm gonna move up just a little bit. Okay. Um, the dwarves are still huddled here. Uh, Deathita has halted as she was going to explore the cavern um, at the sound of commotion. And across the river, you see a large hulking beast uh, walking on two legs, wielding a battle axe. It's horned, and it moves towards the figure, towards the hobgoblin soldiers who are retreating and taking shots at it. Um, that oh is gosh. a minotaur. Indeed. <laughs> Oh, that's a rough break for them. Behind, let's, uh, let's, let's get the heck out of here, guys. Behind the Minotaur comes another. Oh, man. And you witness one Minotaur charge and then the other. Oh. And two of the Hobgoblins are slain. Now, uh, we'll just go from where we were at the top of initiative, I believe, uh, to Silverado. Is Nabadam Dam still alive? Or did he get taken out? He's taken out. Ah, uh, well, his other guys are dead to me. I was going to try and save him and have him jump across and grab onto something, but he's dead. So I just say, let's get out of here. Yeah, man. All right. Uh, yeah, sounds good. You're okay with that? Oh, God. It, my, what is going on? I'm trying to move my guy, but my entire map is moving. Do you just book it? Yes. I mean, I there's, so, yeah. yeah. As fast as we can move with one guy that has one leg. As, as much as I would love to fight two minotaurs and possibly more goblins. Wow. Ah, uh, the DM rolls a one. It's good. And an unspoken roll. Yeah, this is good for the love, players. I love those unspoken rolls. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, well, the medium the would have been good. Minotaurs seem quite interested in these new hobgoblins nice. and wow. they rush them again as you are all backing away you see the hobgoblins just gored into the river and swept away one of them swept away the other let's, just lying on the shore let's get out of here and indeed you all run down the passageway um, the floor is slick but there is no running water here and I will reveal the rest of the passage here. You come to a, a dead end. On the middle of the floor, there is a hammer. And it is in the middle of a circle that has been drawn on the floor. Vincent and I believe Xander perhaps would recognize 
uh, magical writings, runes ah, uh, sure. scribed around on the floor around this weapon. Hey, that's a strange hammer. I'm going to touch it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What? Yeah, let's get up um, there first. Yeah, just uh, detect magic. Let's see if there actually is like an active magic going on right now. You detect a uh, powerful magical presence. Wow. Can I do uh can I there's a powerful uh, magic see if there's any there. sort of uh historical or religious significance? Um my hi my history and my religion skill are are the same. Um see if I can figure out what am I trying to figure out here uh, it seems almost more like a trap don't you think oh yeah seems like it can I roll insight on the circle <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, interesting idea I don't think so though all right Those you all can try can definitely think this is a trap though without needing to roll that that's I look I'm willing to touch it guys I was letting you know that. <laughs> oh, hey, um, with the detect magic spell, um, I also learned the the school of magic, which will be very important. One. Okay. So uh, what? What? Goodness, I guess that, that would require me to know the school of magic, wouldn't it? Oh, darn. Of course, <laughs> of course. I mean, uh, not to put you on the spot or anything, but uh, <laughs> I would list off the schools of magic as if I knew them, but I don't. <laughs> and there we are. I have half an idea. <laughs> Um, let's see. So I'll just take a short rest right next to this hammer as we hear the screams of the hobgoblins. <laughs> so we're just, it's just, they're just screaming and it just, it just pans to us and we're just like eating sandwiches. Like, this is good water. Rather than uh, describe the school of magic, I'll give you a little bit more information um, regarding the situation here. And then I'll keep that in mind for the future, um, for okay. future things. But it appears to be. Uh, a well-crafted weapon in the middle of a circle that is meant to enchant this weapon with some kind of special um, special power. Wow. Okay, so it's it's an enchantment then. All right. Okay. So okay. Gonna, it feels like the magic is still present, still being imbued into this weapon. Like the process so is in pro in progress. Being enchanted, mm. as we speak. Yeah, which means somebody's probably going to come back for this weapon. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's just ignore it then and go down the river. <laughs> just completely leap now. Nah. I mean, if free we take, to do what you what you think needs to be done, if we take the hammer, which is tempting, it would possibly dispel the enchantment, and it would no longer be magical. Yeah, because it's still in the process of being enchanted. It, yeah, but we have no idea how long that's going to take. Gosh, this is interesting, guys. I I am of no help here. I have no clue what any of this is, so it's up to you two. You can have the wizard take a look at it. The other, you can take. Str you can have Stordrake. Stordrake. Yeah. Oh yeah, Stordrake's here with us. Stordrake, would you take a take a look at this hammer? This hammer and magic circle. Just, just being it being a hammer, it feels like something that the dwarves would be interested in. Of course. Yeah. Uh, okay. Says Brukoth. Here, Deathida, you watch Brukoth. And um, Strodrake comes warily. He seems to be contemplating the nature of this thing. Um, he takes a moment, says some words of magic, and says that he suspects it would grant the person who wields this the ability to withstand... Um, superhuman conditions or um, let's see natural conditions that a human might not otherwise be able to withstand though the exact nature of what it does he says he would need to wield the hammer um, in order to determine that and he says that he senses that this is still being filled with magic though he knows little about in actually enchanting weapons himself so he doesn't know like how long something like this would take he says it f seems quite powerful already, and based off of just the basic studies that he's done, uh, perhaps it will be ready soon. I guess we just wait then. Yeah. 
Do you want to take a... <laughs> if we have the hammer. Let's okay. literally just eat lunch as those goblins are getting murdered. Yeah, that's not... I don't mind that. Uh... <laughs> Seems like a win-win. Yeah, man. Um, Come on. Is yeah. it... Uh... Does it does it seem, Shredrake? Does it look like it would be, have any sort of trap or anything to it, like a magical trap, or, or is this, are these rooms and everything just based just the enchantment as 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 best as you can tell? He points to some of the runes on the ground and says, "These runes are dark magic that I do not know, but I suspect it lends a power to the weapon. I I can't be sure." Can I do an Arcana check and just see if I can figure anything out from what I might know? If I can figure out if if taking it is going to harm us, or if I can if I can get a sense of how much longer the process this thing will it'll take before it's completed. Absolutely. Who wants a cursed hammer? I, I have rolled twenty, not natural twenty. I think that means I rolled eighteen and add two. The runes on the ground are slightly illuminated. And when they've completely faded, then the weapon should be, um, you know, essentially fully charged with the magical energy that the enchanter was trying to imbue it with. And do I get a sense that if it's if, if something if it's if it's removed before it's finished, that a something bad will happen, or b it'll just be just it'll just to your knowledge be, the um, spell will be broken. It'll be broken. Yeah, that's that's the next question. Can I look around uh, elsewhere in this area see if there's any? Um, you know, trail or footprints or anything. Um, if I can get an idea of how long it's been since someone's been here before us. Good call. Yes. Do you think that would be an investigation check in this situation or survival? Um, I would say probably investigation. I mean, okay. they're the same for me. That works for so, me. Yeah. Oh, that's a five. I don't see nothing. <laughs> yes, just um, slippers, prints of slippers approaching um, in the silt here and there, but most of the pass is made of rock. Okay. Now, this man knows how to relax. He's wearing slippers. He does not care. <laughs> Chilling. It's got, that man does not care about cold feet whatsoever. All he needs is your robe. <laughs> die before you take this robe off me. <laughs> Steal your own robe. What hor what horror is underneath this? You'll never know. Now, <laughs> as you all are examining this hammer, are any of you keeping an eye on the situation with the hobgoblins and Minotaur? Like, from well, I don't know jack about this. To put that behind you. I'll 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 basically I'll keep watch on what's going on because I can't be of any help to the magic. Situation. Okay. Well, as a good portion of the party is contemplating this magical hammer, um, Silverado, you see the Minotaur leave. They grunt. They look disinterested. And then you hear a whistle. And a strange looking beast like a giant squid crab or lobster, I'm not sure how exactly to explain it, approaches the corpses of the hobgoblins and just begins flaying the corpses, seeming to search through it, <laughs> search through the corpses for whatever. Um, you see it slow for a moment as it picks through and seems to find a few things that it tosses off to the side. And then the attention of this thing seems to look not at you, but through you in your direction. And it begins to move across the water. I, uh, and I will move it onto the map here so you can kind of look at it. I, 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 I uh I run quickly over to the magic hammer and I'm like, oh guys, there's a giant squid crab thing coming over here for the hammer. Get ready to fight. This is gonna be bad. It'll be very bad. So this thing has two huge claws like a lobster or a crab. 
and it has just this squid like um squid like appendages coming out of its crustacean head as uh as as Silverado says that I'm gonna try and hide yeah me too just uh just off to the side somehow somewhere yeah i mean is is there anywhere we can hide there are, <laughs> try to take some cover? the circles are um whichever of stalactites or stalagmites you know go to uh, from the ground up cool. those are that's uh stalagmites thank you stalagmites from the ground up and you can become obscured within these it's very dark here the only light source is coming from the hammer so if you all are trying to hide please roll a stealth check okay all right all right, all right, all right. And this then also, we, to... we can have treated Shit. what just transpired Ooh. as a short rest. Ooh, oh, great. <sighs> Oof and schmertz. Cool. Um, Incorporated. <laughs> nice. Thank During you. that short rest, would it have been possible for me to do a, um, what is it called? Give me a second. Song of rest. While we're doing that, I can heal, for, heal everyone an extra 1d6. That's fine. During Absolutely. a short rest. Cool. So is whenever you uh, if you roll a d6 on top of whatever your hit dice are. Oh, well, I don't need that. Dude, I got uh, oof and smirts with that nat one. Oh, I'm going to roll. Silverado has a 6 stealth. Vincent has a 14. Huh? Oh, and I Very. see Xander. My apologies. We got a 10. Very exciting. Uh, I heal. I heal twelve hit points. I think I'm at. I'm at seventeen now, which is that's better. pretty good. Silverado, better. what about Kingston? Better than five. Uh, you want me to roll stealth for Kingston? Yes. If you're telling him <laughs> to hide, yeah, he's kind of looking to you to follow the lead here. This is not his natural uh, habitat. Neither me, no, dude. I'm out of my element too. <laughs> Kingston, that's a fourteen. So better. Uh, I, than... I, I rolled at the beginning there. I rolled uh, ten. Yeah. Thank you. For my stuff. Kingston's no like crouching over here by you. Deathita is back here in the cave, uh, further in. She is taking great interest in this hammer and is concentrating on it. She has some books in her bag that she's kind of looking through. She looks nervously down the hallway at what you all are doing. Um. <clears throat> Brukoth is unconscious still. Strodrake begins to try to pull him into the darkness here to hide. And will everybody please roll initiative? Okay. All right. Kingston, Kingston, my, my yeah. buddy, my pal. This is going to be yeah. very bad. I got can... 23 on my initiative. Sorry. Xander, 23. Vincent, we have... It's weird because it gives 19. me decimals. Okay, 19. Yeah, uh, that's just in case someone ties. Ah, interesting. Yeah, the decimal point is our is our um, dexterity score. It's easier to figure right? out than okay. looking at dex. Yeah. The chances of it happening are low, but still. Okay. I'll, uh, Xander. So I'll uh, I'll ready. I'm gonna have my curl, my crossbow uh, knocked and ready, and just hold hold my action for um, uh, until I, if I see uh, something come our way. Okay, action held, and then Vincent. Um, actually, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll hold an Eldritch blast. Okay. And. You hear from down the hallway the clicking of this thing's claws and its strangely um, hooved, clawed feet. And as it gets to here, you can, if you are within range, you can take your readied actions. Nice. Okay. Do we get advantage since we were hidden? I uh, 
Okay, so as this thing is walking down the hallway, its claws clicking. Vincent, it seems to be staring directly at you. So that's a no. You will <laughs> not have advantage, but Xander will. So well, what is the range on my It's still a 24 to hit. That hits. Right. I don't need your stinking advantage. <laughs> Nine force. <laughs> Nine force damage. Nice. Um, and Xander, you're readied. Um... Yeah, I just need to make see if it's a... Uh, I forget what the short range is on my crossbow. It is 80. You're good to go. Am I good to go? Okay, cool. No disadvantage. All right. So you said advantage, which is fun. Crossbow. Roll them up. 20, 23 Indeed. and 24. That'll hit. Nice. For eight. Smack. Eight hit points. Okay. And Silverado, you're up. Okay. All right. Do we want this thing close? Yes, no? I do not want it close to me. I don't want anything close. But oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. I run up to it, and I start stabbing it. <laughs> That's all I can do. <laughs> no. Oh, no. I don't hit it. Damn. I don't. All right. I punch it. Yeah, you I, do. I do hit it. Crit punch. With the crit. It's nice. nine damage. Nice. Just roll a one and a 20 back to back. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's totally amazing. Did. And then I'm going to use Flurry of Blows and uh, hit it again. I assume that's also going to hit. That will hit. 24 will do it. Five and another damage. five points of damage. Holy crap, man. And solid, solid. That's it. Okay, after Flurry of Blows, hey, it's not just a fancy name. It actually is a just it's, a it's a flurry of blows, yes. Yeah, man. And Kingston I, rushes up by your side, yep. uh, eager to hunt with you. We're getting crabbed tonight. <laughs> um he has a hard time biting this thing. It's like nothing he's ever encountered before. And Xander, you're up. Right. I'll hold him back. Uh, select. I just need to read the spell really quick. Sorry, guys. Uh, no worries. I do not have animal friendship. Ronst, I would totally cast that and make it go away. I don't know if this would be considered uh, an animal okay. that you could be friends with. It's a beast. <laughs> so it would... Right. Perhaps. It Maybe. does look like... A bit of an anomaly per, or something like that. <clears throat> All right, I gesture towards this thing and I just yell, dude, man, you make you give sushi a bad name, and I'm gonna vicious mockery at him. <laughs> yeah, um, he doesn't have to understand me, he just has to be able to hear me. That's what okay. I was checking. Please. Uh, so he gets a he gets a uh, wisdom save DC thirteen <laughs> to to not take one damage and uh, okay. Hey. And he has disadvantage on his next uh, action. Can I get inspiration too? I feel like I'm going to need it. Uh, good call, dude. With uh, my bonus action. Wait for it. I'm going to keep rolling sixes. I'll uh, yell out to, uh, to Silverado. Dude, the lion's heart beats within you. Give him, a, give him an inspiration dice. I am the beast puncher. And that's the end of my turn. And Vincent, that brings us to you. Hey. I am going to... Shoot this thing. Okay, so I gotta move up just a little bit. Right up there. Get me in 60 feet. Perfect, okay. So I'm going to uh, uh, cast Hex on this thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I will give it disadvantage on strength checks. Why not? Just in case 
and tries to grapple Silverado me. decides to grapple or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, right. And uh, I will hit him with another Eldritch Blast. Or I will not. Hey, man. That's okay. a seven. <laughs> Good attempt. Actually, actually hits, you know. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, okay. We'll see what happens here, and then, though. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. So I got a front. So that was 20 feet of movement. So I'm going to use my last 10 to just kind of try to step back into this corner here. Sure. I know I can't actually hide, but just try to get a little bit of cover. Sounds good. Sounds good. Silverado. Okay, that's my turn. Thank you. In front of you, this monstrous beast just stands up on these uh, hooves that are bisectioned into large claws. It raises its even larger claws above its head. These claws are as big as a man and it attempts to pinch you with these large pinchers. Dude, he's gonna he pinch me. He's gonna pinch you. Disadvantage. Sorry. <laughs> well, 16 hit your AC. It's a disadvantage though. Oh, disadvantage. Thank you. No problem. I didn't want to hear You're, it. <laughs> you did roll twice. Now that was damage. Oh, that's the damage, nice. Yeah, that's the damage. So 11, Ooh. I assume, will not hit. No. So this thing misses its pinch, giant pincher driven into the ground, and then the other one comes across the top uh, trying to attack you as well. No. I believe that will hit. It will hit, yes. And it grabs you up, lifting you into the air by your torso. And you're considered grappled. Okay. Well, I'm down to 13. Okay. And Silverado, you're up. Uh, hmm. Uh, what can Kingston do? Can he just, can he attack? He can attack. He can bite. Okay. I'd like for him to bite before I do anything. He runs in trying to attack on your behalf, but he can't seem to do any damage. Yes, of course, of course, of course. Things got disadvantage on strength checks if uh, if you try. Well, to break out. I'm gonna do that then. I'm gonna try to break out. Got to break free. So what would that be? Strength? Uh, yes, please. And it looks like here, the way they have the monster laid out, we're working on a DC here, trying to break a DC to break free oh, of this okay. ability. <clears throat> so it'd be a saving oh, it's, it's throw. It's not a contested roll. Okay. All right. Well, I tried. <laughs> Strength save and throw. Here we go. 20. Boom. Nat 20. Oh, I'm out of there, baby. Don't even need it. All right. All right. <laughs> nice. No, when I, because that's my action. Uh, well, I can't do anything, so I guess I sit there. If I run away, it'll attack me. So you're going to stay put as bait? I can't. Yeah, I can't really move. No, okay. it'll hit me if I do. All right. Xander, you're up. That seemed to work pretty well last time. Uh, wait, wait a minute, actually. Hold on. I forgot I am a monk. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am a monk. A monk? What will that do for you? I am monk, and I use I use monk ability called Step of Wind, and I use Disengage as... My, no, no I, I'm going to use Dodge as a uh, bonus action. So they'll have disadvantage on any attacks. Okay, cool. Well played. And then we'll have Xander. All right. Um, as I see uh, Silverado do that, I'll change up my taxes, tactics and take another shot with my crossbow at him. Ahoy. Uh, 16? 16 I don't know why. hits. Sorry, I'm looking at the first one. I'll change it back to normal. Yay. For four. Not, not my greatest shot, but try not to hit Silverado. I'm dodging, man. There we go. Booyah. Um, and with that, 
I will back up a little bit. It's back by Strodrake here. And that'll be my turn. Okay, that'll bring us to Vincent. Hmm. Does this thing look like it's still standing pretty pretty strong? It is it still has the spirit to fight, yes. Okay. Big old crap, man. Oh, well, I'm going to having, I, I know that I know we're kind of cornered at this point. Um, and after just watching him sort of throw around Silverado like that and, and brush off our last couple of talk of attacks, I think it's finally going to happen here. Uh, Vincent's going to step out to the middle of the, the cavern hero moment. Uh, um, and, um, for my action for this round, I'm going to use my uh, necrotic shroud. Ah, yes. How, do, how does so that work? What yeah. that does is, I will read it out here to you. Um, I unleash the divine energy within myself, causing my eyes to turn to pools of darkness and two skeletal, ghostly, flightless wings to sprout from my back. Um, any creature within 10 feet of me um, that can see me must succeed on a uh, uh, charisma save. Well, I don't think there's anybody around me, or be frightened from me. Um. So yeah, basically, I I step out. My eyes go completely just pools of black. Um. There's like a a shadowy energy that just sort of emanates from my body, and my what's left of my wings are uh, released. So I just got these huge skeletal wings, flightless skeletal wings uh, draping over me. Um, I also get once per round, I can, any anyone I, I, I uh, deal damage to, they take e extra necrotic damage equal to my level. Awesome. Wow. So going metal. What do you think about this, Xander, as this unfolds right next to you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right wow oh, my goodness i don't even see this i'm focused like on how this day is going that's all <laughs> yeah uh that is my action though and i don't really have any other bonuses he's already hexed so okay that's my turn very good strodrake says by the gods dunsmir save us as you turn into this magnificent being and he himself shoots a magic missile at this creature. Oh, nice. Woo! Way to jump in the fray, bro. <laughs> <laughs> His magic goes errant, unfortunately. Do you, do you need to hit with magic yeah, missiles? Just, magic it, missiles it, it, is oh, auto, as an auto hit. Yeah, yeah it's just right. I was rolling just like as a chance hit, but yeah, I guess we'll have to make it just okay. automatically hit. Uh that's the beauty of magic missile. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just dang it. Automatic points. We're probably. Does anybody know the damage of magic missile off the top of their head? I'm just looking it up it's, right here. I think it's um, a D four per missile, and I think it's three missiles at first level. Yep, I think that's right. Thank so you. If, yeah, it'd be three three D four plus. Uh, it's a D four plus one for each one. Oh yeah. Right. Hey, there you go. I think it only rolled me one d4 here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you create three darts. Holy Each dart does one d4 plus one. All right. Yeah, I, he got three consistent oh. rolls of six plus one. I see. Okay, so it should be six less than that if it's a d4 plus one. So yeah, um, yeah, got it. Twelve. Okay. Strodrake is quite afraid, but. Needs to do his part. And this giant beast in front of you, Silverado, raises his pinchers again and attempts to grab you up. And this will be at disadvantage, correct? Yes, it will. Are all of his attacks at disadvantage against you? Against me, yes. Wow. Any and all. Whoops, extra. And so, <laughs> darn it. As he misses with his first attack, he tries again with the other pincher. 
Come at me, man. And will a 16 hit you? Oh, it will. Damn. Okay. We'll have... Okay. What did he deal to me? 14 damage. All right. I'm at, I'm at zero, everybody. And your Two limp attacks. body is lifted into the air again. Okay. And then Goodbye. Silverado, you're up. Well, unless I roll a nat 20... Uh, hold on. That's I gotta actually select the nat twenty. Eighteen. Well, I'm good there. Okay. One, one death save, right? Yep, that's one. Nice. Xander, you're up. All right. With my crossbow out still, I uh, just step out so I can get a get a good view of this guy. And I'm gonna kill him. Take him out. Oh, I'm not gonna kill him. I rolled six. Oh no. Um, Bonus action, I am going to throw a healing word at, at my friend Silverado. Okay, very good. I'm alive. How many hit points do we have? For six. I nice. am alive. That'll get him to his feet, hopefully. <laughs> I, I won't die immediately. That's all that matters. It's my last spell for the day. Vincent, you're up, I believe. And and I'm just going to back up a little bit. Sorry. Okay. No worries. Vincent is going to just very slowly start now in his new form, start just kind of walking down the cavern towards the, uh, towards this thing. I'm going to hold out my hands and I'm going to um, unleash another Eldritch Blast. Son of a bitch. That's a seven. Hey. This crab is good. Darn it. He's going to kill me. Man. As, I, as I go uh, past uh, Silver um, Vincent, I just think, good thing he's on my team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm still just going to be slowly walking up towards him to about there. Okay. And that's my turn. Not looking good here. Mm-mm. Silverado. Yes. The thing Am lashes I... you with its tentacle. Please make a constitution saving throw. Oh, I will oh. do that instead of take damage. Gladly. Nat hey, 20. Hey. And as <laughs> kind you, of, you in these 20s today, man. Yeah. Saving throws. It kind of licks Critical you with thing. these tentacles and tosses your, your body to the side. Uh, you're covered in this thing's ooze and the icor that was dripping from its mouth. Then it raises its pincher and... It, tries to smash your wolf I don't like doing this ah but the wolf is too quick for him darts in and out of the claw nice good job Kingston and next is Silverado I get up bloodied slimy I don't know I don't know why that thing picked me up just to lick me but it seemed to have done nothing. So, uh, let me check real quick if there's any. Nope. No, I I don't. I don't have. I, I don't have anything I can do. That's cool. So, so I'm just gonna have to play D and D, I guess, and just, just walk up to it and. You dare try to kill my dog? I'm going to stab you. Nine. Oh, no. I'm, I'm going to use that. That. Uh, no. Well, I don't know. Should I use the? No, I'm not going to keep the inspiration. So I'm just going to try and punch it then. Hits. All right. right. Hit. Cool. It's five mm. damage. Five damage as you punch this cr giant crustacean looming before you. Blurry of blows, as I would. Another. Ten. I'm going to add the D6 to that. It says a 12 hit. A 12 will not hit. I oh, no. nice try, Very man. sad. And I... And I... Say, oh, I'm out of here. And I run over here. And it can't attack me since I use flurry blows. 
Kingston, however, is a different deal. He might get killed. Xander, you're up. All right. Watch Sorry, my wings gonna, on that run, man. Just got to zoom out <laughs> a little bit. Cool. Just making checking my, my range here. Oh. Uh, can't get a clear shot where, with, uh, with uh, Vincent there, so I'm going to have to move up. Uh, yeah. Can I get to the one in front of you Silverado? Can, yeah, yeah you I can, can get there, right? You can move past me, yeah. I can get right there. Now I'll take a, take, a, take a shot at him. All right. Archers at the ready. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, roll no. the eight. Okay. The eight will miss. Eight will miss. We're That's good at me. surviving, but we're not good at attacking. That's me. Okay. But good thing my friend Vincent's going to kill him right now. Now Vincent's up. Vincent is going to keep walking. Still completely silent. Still swirl of horrors around him. Um, and I'm going to use my second and final spell slot and cast Scorching Ray. I get three fire fire attacks at him. Okay. Nice. Uh, let me pull up my thing here. Each hit is 2d6. So there's an 18, hits. a 9, miss, and a 22. Hits. Wow. Okay. So four, 4d6? Boom. So he gets, yeah, he'll take 4d6 of fire damage. Which is eighteen. Oh. Nice. Plus nice rolls. he's hexed, so that's another six points in necrotic, plus another three points in necrotic for my uh necrotic shroud. And what about the damage that's added on to Scorching Ray? Because it's a plus five right next to it. Or am I imagining uh, that? No, that's just the attack. All right. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't yeah. add anything to that one. But he did do 18, 24, 27. Big damage, big damage. Yeah. K Kaboom. Just just unload on him. That's what we needed. That's what we needed there because things are getting ugly. Uh -huh. I've cooked sushi, guys. Guys, you think sushi raw. Yeah, man. I'm going to eat and this crap. Since both of you guys have, have walked directly past me, you, I will let you know you have noticed that I am uh, mumbling incoherently in... Um, some very evil sounding language that you've never heard me speak before. Awesome. Savage. <laughs> and That's my turn. Vincent, after you approach this thing and cast some devastating spells at it, its attention continues to be fixed to you as it swipes at the wolf before it. Ah, Kingston's going to die. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's going to die. Oh no. Kingston's dead. Oh, that's not bad. Only eight. He's and a wolf. So Kingston just points. suffered a critical hit from this. So uh, we'll roll some extra damage. And uh Kingston's dead. Kingston is smashed into the wall. He falls unconscious, motionless. Hopefully not dead, but you He's will not a know. He is a puppy. <laughs> Fair enough. This large crustacean charges you, Vincent. Its claw raised high in the air, and it brings it down, trying to grab at you. Mm. Oh. And indeed it does. It lifts you into the air violently, squeezing the life out of you with its the teeth of its pinchers, and you take seven damage. And you're Welcome grabbing. Welcome to the melee crew. I will. Oh shit! No, I can't. Ah, these stupid two spell slots. <laughs> oh wait, no, I dropped. I dropped a uh, hellish rebuke anyway. I don't have that anymore anyway. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Next, we have Silverado. No worries. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Let me just double check something here real quick. He. Oh, that's just when I transform. Never mind. I thought I was going to have to make a saving throw from being frightened, but that's only if he's within 10 feet of me when I transform. Gotcha. So. Okay. 
Well, uh, I have become an archer. So I am going to... I don't have any key points left, so there's, there's my, my special stuff's gone. So, God, I'm just going to shoot him. There's not much I can do with my... I'm just going to shoot him with my short bow. Does a 14 hit? Do you, oh, a, do you have a plus five to attack on your bow? That is with the plus five. But is that what you would have with on your uh, short bow? Because here you have the short sword. Uh... Oh, yeah. It's the same damage and everything. Okay. One's just range. That will hit. Okay. Yeah, it's literally the same damage. I have darts, which are a little worse. I'm just going to do short sword stuff. It's five. Five Pearson. That's all I can do. I'm, I'm sorry, man. Don't help anybody mean... if you die, so that's yes. got to keep that in mind. Xander, you're up. All right. Uh, as I see uh, my, my friend Silverado come back, I say, you know what, buddy? I, I got your back here. I'm going to charge in with Vincent. It's my two short swords. Oh, are we all mailing now? I, if you told me that. I would have no, gone. Hey, no, no. We're just we're giving, you, <laughs> giving, giving you a break, man. You've been taking the brunt. It's all good. And I'm going to go short sword, short sword on this guy. Nice. Let's finish this thing off. For a 15 hit. Miss. What? What? 15 misses? 15 misses. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, my bonus attack. I'll attack him again. Does Oh, is that a crit? No, it's not no, crit. It's, it's close. Yeah, I'm sorry. I called Silverado as a hit when it shouldn't have been. My my apologies. Yeah. Uh, it'll need to be a higher roll to break the, the uh, AC. My bad on that. No problem. But a, uh, tw a 24 will hit, definitely. Nice. 24 hit and six. Four. Four damage. Ooh, okay. So my damage minus one. It's still alive, but this thing is uh, looking badly injured now. Badly injured. Although its focus is still intent on Vincent. And Vincent, you are up, I believe. Kill it, Vincent. I'm Kill that thing to... dead. I'm going to drop back. I'll take the opportunity to attack. It's fine. You're grappled. Oh, that's right. That's I'm right. grappled. Okay, well, I'm just going to put my my hand on his stupid face and blast and cast another Eldritch Blast then. All right. I'll do it at disadvantage. It's fine. <laughs> nice. This is like XCOM. If you miss at this somehow. Damn it. Nine. Unfortunately, you're not able to get your magic off as he's wrestling you around. Okay. You have Missy Step, don't you? Yeah, but I don't have any more spell slots. Ah. I cast that Hex and Scorching Ray, man. That's it. I'm done. That would do it, yes. <laughs> Vincent, you feel one of these giant pinchers begin to kind of claw at your chest, but not to claw into your chest, kind of trying to reach for something. Uh, you feel it grasping at the magical item that Thragnown had given you as it turns and it runs, carrying you. And Xander, you can make an attack of opportunity. Nice. Is this thing... Will. Collect magical items. Oh, I miss. Darn. Okay. This thing is running with you in hand, Vincent. Oh, great. <laughs> and it pinches at you with its other hand. How far am I? I mean, I'm fast. I don't know if I can catch up. I can. Well, oh, I can't uh, hit it. Will though. a 16 hit? Me? Yes. Yes. Is yes, he a disadvantage for any reason? Uh, not that I know of. No. Okay. Then you will take twelve damage here as he's fleeing with you. Thanks. It's okay. I, I still got two hit points left. You gotta get out of the grapple, man. I only need one, man. I only need Next one. Next is Silverado. Well, ah, man, I just run here, right next to Kingston and. I mean, man, I don't. This sucks. I'm like one away from him, oh, and I no. can't, I can't hit him or anything. I don't have any key points. Man, I don't know. 
Oh no! Is it King Sin's at your side, and he looks quite terrified. He hasn't attacked since you've been separated, if you've noticed. Ah, uh, yes, yes, Kingston, it's, it's gonna be all right. I'll just throw a dart at him. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Um, would poison be effective on this thing? It's a giant crab that lives underground. Mm, I wouldn't. Hard to say. Uh, I wouldn't think so. No. Yeah, so I'm just gonna That's throw a dart. A hard shell, you know. Oh wow! Boom. Hits. Yes, I I have other attacks. Yes. So six. that is six damage. Do I? I don't think I get to throw another <laughs> dart for whatever reason. Um. Well, this one seems to be enough, and it sticks like right oh. between the the points in the shell behind its head, and penetrates. Oh. It must be straight to the brain, because this thing falls in a heap and releases Vincent. Nice. That Nicely was done. pretty close. <laughs> Damn well thing done. killed me three times. Or two, or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this good, thing has fallen to a heap. You see the bodies of the hobgoblins. Next round, I was going to with a the... dagger. <laughs> I, I imagine. I'm. I imagine my darts are uh, throwing knives, so I guess you could just take that and just start carving it. Brutal. Just push it in. <laughs> you do see the bodies of the hobgoblins on the other side of the river, but the minotaur are nowhere to be seen. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my shroud and uh, go back into my regular sort of form and just very sheepish, sheepishly kind of shrink back up against the wall. And Vincent looks a little, uh, a little perplexed, a little scared. And it's just sort of, just like I said, just very, very uh, withdrawn. As you're there kind of crouching in the corner, or as you described, you just hear this very faint voice at the back of your mind. Good, Vincent. Good. Um, as the as I know that the, the battle seems to be over, I'm going to rush over if, I, if he'll let me and... Uh, See if I can help um, Kingston if, if he's got if I can patch him up if he's yeah. Um, Kingston is alive. Brain. Okay, he is he is good. Okay, and you're able to help him. Your okay. knowledge of medicine, you know, in respects to animals, is not as great as as it is for humans. But you <clears throat> offer whatever aid, and most of this will be soothing the animal. Cool. Okay. Perhaps At this point, I'm have... just looking for you know point of point of entry, point of impact. <laughs> sure, yeah. Perhaps right. you have something that will keep Kingston calm. Uh, a few ribs seem to have been broken as he was just oh. hurled against Ooh. the the wall by this vicious creature. So Kingston's going to need to be calm and um, you know not get need... riled up for a while. He's going to need to take a breather. And at that, I think it's a good spot to take a break for the evening, and we'll return in about 10 or 15 minutes to continue the adventure. Sounds good. Hey. All right. Oof. Oof and schmertz. And... and we're back with the Heroes Era after a short rest here. And um, the Heroes have just defeated a terrible cave monster who seemed intent on taking the magical item from Vincent. And here we are. Magic hungry crab. Okay, wow. I'm gonna... Um... God, I don't even know what to do. I've already looked at this stone. I, can't, I, I couldn't figure out what it is. Who, who was it that gave it to me again? It was... Uh, God. Ther Thragnown. Thra Thragnown. It was it Thragnown? Yeah. Okay. Who's gone? Who's gone? Yeah. Yep. And if you recall, he cautioned you not to look directly at it. Let's look directly at it. I have the best wisdom. I could probably withheld. I could probably suffer whatever happens. Oh goodness! <laughs> <laughs> Let's just break your campaign. Give me that stone. I want to look at it. Give Silverado that stone. No. You don't want to look at it. Let's make a hashtag. Give Silverado the stone. <laughs> that would that would be it too. It'd be like. 
do not look directly at this. Whatever hey, you do. Colorado, come here. <laughs> <laughs> this can end the war. We cannot break okay. this vase. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what's the, uh, forgive me. I, I can't remember the name now. No what, what's the name of the, 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 the wizard dwarf that's with us? Strodrick. Strodrick. That's right. Okay. So, um, I'm going to walk over to Stodrake. Stro- Stro- I cannot talk tonight. I'm going to walk over to Stodrake. Um, I'm going to pull the uh, the stone out. And I'm going to pull him like aside, pull him up close to me and be like, what do you know about this? What is this? He says, this is uh, the most a most powerful weapon that we can wield against the darkness. It is uh, the reason for our trip. I am a bit surprised that you possess it and relieved at the same time. Uh, How did you, how did you get this? He looks at you sideways for a moment. He gave it to me. Thragnaun gave this to you. Well, Thragnaun in his infinite wisdom then perhaps has saved us all. Ah, uh, that is good news. Okay, so here's the thing. That thing that we were just dealing with was coming directly for you. He, he had his eyes locked on me the whole time. What was that face? Did you recognize I don't, it? I, I did not. I, don't, I did not. Re- well, did, did I recognize it? Would I have recognized what that was? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, crap. Some kind of aberration. Yeah, yeah, it was some some sort of some sort of creature. I don't know, but it was absolutely one hundred percent coming directly for this. Yes, it was going after the magic. <sighs> All right. Well, he what says, do we need "Was to do that with this thing?" He says, "Was that was that thing their pet?" I remember them whistling. I don't. It didn't seem like their pet. God. Maybe. If they own that thing. I don't know, man. Huh. Well, look, the thing's dead. If they own it, then we should throw it into the river and to Terezessa take it. I want to eat it. <sighs> I want to eat it. I think I can hunt down here in a cape. I need to feed free Kingston. He needs to eat, man. Well, so when are you offering up one of your arms? What kind of check would I need to do to tell if this is an edible creature? <laughs> you eat it. Uh, you find out. Maybe a survival check. Are you a monk or a barbarian? Can I check? <laughs> I, have, I have good survival. You guys want to find out if this is edible, you can do so. <laughs> I mean, my constitution did just go up. Oh, <laughs> I have an eight. Seems fine to me. When you break off the claw to kind of examine it, Silverado, it smells rancid. Mm, some of that. Oh, uh, I got a 19. Vincent, uh, you notice that there really is no fleshy meat within this thing. Uh, it seems to be some monster of fell magic. Right. I would hesitate Silver- to eat it. Uh, Silverado, look at this thing. What, what, what here are you going to eat? I, maybe I was going to like take one of the claws, kind of like suck it out like a lobster, you know? Suck what out, man? What's in the claw? The meat. The, the meat. There it's is fi- no meat. Smell it. Smell it. It's finally that's aged. Gook. It's that's finally gook. aged. No. My friend. No, sorry. Smells horrible, that's, man. I can, I can smell it That's gook. Here. What do you think of this, Kingston? You, you want to eat this? <laughs> Kingston comes and begins happily licking up this ichor. That was a joke. That was a joke. Stop. <laughs> uh, the Kingston backs up as you kind of shoo him away. I, I let him licking sm- his I, chops. I, I let him smell the meat. Yeah. Oh, um, also, as, as Kingston comes by, I'm going to reach down to kind of pet him, and I'm going to rub, rub his chest where, where he's got the cracked ribs that you mentioned before, and I'm going to use my um, healing hands to give him four hit points. Oh, nice. very nice. You are just a magic man. He kind of snaps at you for a moment, but um, then puts his tail between his legs, 
just for a brief instant as he uh, seems to be able to move more easily. That was hey, brave uh, of you, Vincent. Very brave. Yes. Wow. Nice job, man. I can always talk to him. Yeah, that seems to have done a lot for the for the animal. Yeah. Well, uh, man, this this guy who's passed out right now, he's got a lot to catch up on. The guy is a leg amputated. We fought a giant crab that were that was a pet to the Minotaurs that killed the hobgoblins. There's crab one magic. Oh yeah, the magic. Let's check up on the magic hammer. See if that's done. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, we can go take a peek at that, but I definitely think we need to consider. We, I mean, we're we're all exhausted. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we could make maybe. I can't get us past that river until I take a bit of a rest. Well, I'm thinking because the, you know, the the, the hammer is kind of at a dead end into the cave. Might be it a might safe not place. Be bad for us to like, yeah, just just back ourselves into a corner. And camp out. What's take, uh? Take, what's take, above take, us? Take shifts on watch. Is, is there know? anything above us? There's like a, we can see a ceiling. You can see a ceiling. Um, just rocky slabs. There, it seems to be a closed-off ceiling. Let's uh, yeah, maybe we'll just do a quick search around that dead end to make sure there's no, uh, you know, hidden passages or something behind us. But otherwise, you know, there's only one way at us. It's pretty safe. I would as safe as anywhere is around here, I guess. Yeah, can feel free good, to have someone idea. make a make a perception check at advantage. I'll go down there and have a look. Okay. That's why my ah, as you have a look around, it appears to be just what you expected: an enclosed cave with stalagmites growing from the ground, and as you all come to the chamber where the hammer is, you do notice that. The runes are no longer glowing. Ooh. Who would like the honors? I don't want to touch it. Let me touch it. Is that what happens, Silverado? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't do that yet. Um, and, I want to touch it. Since I want to wait, Silverado. <laughs> I want to touch it. I want to. I want to just. I want to cast detect magic. I. I. I'm expecting the hammer to light up. And maybe the area, I don't know. I just want to see if there's any other like residual, basically if there's any magic traps of any sort. Okay. You sense the residual effect of the ritual, um, you know, still around this weapon, but you sense that the magic is now concentrated within this weapon. Okay. <clears throat> I touch so now? I'll, I'll tell Silverado, I'll be like, I, you can go, but, you know, take a take a close look at it before you, you know, Woo! make sure there's no traps or anything. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I, <laughs> I walk up, I walk up close to the hammer and I kind of squat down and I, and I peer at it looking for traps of any sort. Will you make an investigation or perception check? I would do a perception because I am way better in perception. I got 16. Am I dead? Doesn't it <laughs> seems like this hammer looks really beautiful. Really well crafted. You don't notice any traps or anything like that. Okay, well, I I uh I look back to everybody. I look down to Kingston. I was like, "Well, Kingston, if I'm dead, uh Xander gets to take care of you cuz his pet died." Uh <laughs> You can take my ring off of me to speak to him. I'll see you guys if I die in the. Uh, and I just pick up the hammer. As you lift the hammer, your lungs fill with air. And you feel very heavy at the same time. I, just, I think I got lead feet. Hmm. And that's what you notice. The hammer feels very light in your hands, easy to swing. Uh, I look back and like, well, I'm not dead. Uh, I can, my lungs have been extended. I guess I can breathe more and I feel heavier. As you move to turn, you feel as though your feet are anchored to the ground almost. Hmm. 
I do have lead feet. I'm afraid to check them and to make sure they're not <laughs> actually metal. <laughs> My feet are now poisonous. Don't go. Don't get. Don't, you'll get lead poisoning. Everyone, stand back. Death of the so approach is quite interested. So you're saying you can't move? Oh, I can move. It's just I don't think I can get knocked over now. Like, I I I bend over backwards, <clears throat> and then I do the Michael Jackson move where I just come back. Do I fall over? <laughs> Yo, check it out, guys. Okay, but just to make sure, I'm going to stand about 30 feet away from Silverado. I'm going to say, like, all right, I want you to sprint to me. Ready? Go. And I sprint towards him. Oh, you have half movement. Oh, I don't want this. I just throw it down. (laughs) As you drop it, you just speed up. Guys, this sucks. Wait, hold on. I... I pick it up and I I like put it on my belt. I like tie it to my belt and I start. I sprint somewhere. Do I still have half movement? Hmm. I'm not holding it with my hands. It's like he has it, but it's not equipped. You're not mm-hmm. wielding it. Uh, you are f- fast as always. Woo! I found a workaround, boys. <laughs> I'm good. It's all about the loopholes. Yeah, man. I lawyered this thing. Where's my subpoena? Lawyered. Lawyered. Uh, so, are you guys okay with just taking this then? Oh, yeah. They're going to feed this hammer to the, the thing, I Ooh. think. I don't know. You might be right, yes. actually. I wanted fine. magic, so. Do we want to take a rest here then? Oh, yeah. I'm hurt. I'm so hurt. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, there goes my fire alarm. Hold on. Yeah, turn that off real quick. No problem. <laughs> and over the course of this rest, um, you guys can, as we discussed, level up. And that will bring us to level four. Level four. Nice. Ooh, 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 ooh. It won't say level four in my in my character sheet. It's bugged. I don't know what to do about that. Well, man. Magic hammer time. I show it to... Uh, what was her name? Decada? Bethida. Bethida. I was like, you got you know anything about this? She's very interested and she begins looking through some books. Strodrake is also uh, quite interested in this magical piece. Oh. She's... Oh hey, look. She must have had the wrong zip or something on it. I uh bills? my graduation money. Oh, yeah, nice. no, I got bills oh, to yeah. pay, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, continue. Uh, Deathada and Strodrake are both quite interested in this magical weapon here. Deathada says, this, this is for mining at the bottom of the, the river. Mining? Yes, you what? fool, you hold it, you hold your breath, you swing the hammer below the water. Oh, and yo! You know I, mining. It- I would go into the water to test out the breathing portion of that, but I would like get swept. No, I wouldn't, because I'm I'm heavy on the ground. De- Deathita runs by your side uh, as you're going to the water. She's just kind of like a little bit frustrated by you, <clears throat> perhaps because this seems to be such a fine magical item, um, and perhaps she deems you to be acting a bit carelessly. But in any case, she is by your side as you rush to the river to test this hammer. And so what exactly do you do? I, okay, so, so judging by what I know about this, if I have the hammer in my hands, I can't move as fast, but I, I seem to stay grounded. And from what she told me, I can mine at the bottom of a river. So I'm thinking I have water breathing and I can't, I am rooted to the ground, so I can't be moved by other forces and it's a strong hammer, so I'm going to I'm going to take a a one of my pittens, which is just something you just like put in a wall so you can tie rope to it so you can climb and stuff. And I put that just somewhere on the ground, and I get my rope out and I tie it to that, and I tie the rest of myself, and I say, I'm going to go in this river real quick. I'm probably going to be very cold when I come out, but 
if that pit and breaks, make sure to hold me so I don't get swept by the current. Death it is right up on the edge of the riverbed. Strodrake, hold that line as you're attempting to conduct your experiment. We got magic. Uh, I make sure that it's uh, it's it's holding the pitten. I take the uh, hammer out, and I uh, I walk under water in the river. Clutching the hammer, you feel as though um, the earth, the very earth itself, is pulling on you, and you walk easily through these rapids. And as your head submerges, you don't feel the uh, usual slight panic that is associated with going underwater because um, you don't seem to need to gather any more air. You're holding your breath, but it doesn't feel as though you're running out of air or energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was very cool. And the water rushes around you as you carry this hammer submerged in this river it's very swift it's about 20 feet deep at the deepest spot i uh i take i i go back up so you know as not to take any more chances i go back up and uh to the rest of everybody and i i ask him like hey should i swing this to see should we see how strong this thing is oh, we're dude. like Oh, please do. <clears throat> Death is right. quite excited. Are you, how do you feel though? You're just walking around down there. Well, I got, I, I got plenty of air. I don't know if I need to breathe anymore. Uh, I don't, I, we'll have to test that later to see how long you can really stay underwater for. Oh, yes, uh, yes. I wasn't seem to be moved by the current whatsoever. Death is just that requires making... me notes in her notebook here as you're explaining it doesn't seem that current will make me move uh i would have to i don't know get hit by like a giant or something to see how uh how far i would get moved if that's another property of this weapon and uh now for the strength test uh where should i th where should i what should i hit this against death it looks to this round rounded piece of river rock that's kind of by itself and she says give this a good smash all righty then i wind up with my 13 strength score and i smash it against the rock well the rock just um, almost explodes into two pieces two shells that come spinning out and they have inside of them uh, beautiful amethyst crystals Yo, we got money, y'all. Check this out. We got crystals. Woo, 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 woo. I, uh... Nice. Can I just, like, take the rock? Is it, like, how big is the rock, essentially? Yeah, got, uh, you know, I picture it to be about this big. Mm -hmm. About that big in two halves, kind of like a size of a basketball or so. Okay. Halves. Well, I have, a, I have a jeweler's kit, so we could probably actually make these into good jewels. Um, oh, well, I don't know. It's a cool hammer, guys. Uh, anybody else wants to give it a swing? Strodrake just seems kind of amazed at Death at a, Oh, how does she know? What? Oh, yeah, well, she's got like a sense for these things, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Death at a would love to swing the hammer, but, you know, she is hesitant to jump in before any of your other friends. Oh, no, give it a swing. Here you go. I hand her the hammer. You could get, get a feel for it yourself. Death it uh, goes to take a step and just kind of her upper body moves at first and it takes a little bit of her focus for her to take an actual step and then she grabs the hammer and kind of smiles and licks her lips seeming to forget the worries of the world and she smashes the hammer into the rock wall and uh rock shards just fly in every direction and a sizable chunk is taken out of the wall and she just kind of laughs in glee and says oh that's a that's some power that's a strong hammer uh, it's more of a mining tool we say than a weapon well we don't know hey uh let's hit someone with it who wants can, to get hit 
Can I can I inspect it with uh, using an Arcana check with uh, on on the actual hammer itself? Yes. Let's try and see what I can figure out from this thing. Uh, a seventeen. Sorry, I have that on the there. Seventeen Arcana. As you're examining the different tests that they're doing and trying to recall any studies that uh, you may have undergone regarding this sort of thing, it seems as though uh, you know this thing is doing a lot of damage to rocks. So it could be <coughs> you probably recollect something about an enchantment that um, gives a hammer extra strength when it's used against rocks. Um, or hard surfaces, something like that. And then, okay. of course, the ability to hold your breath for an extended period of time and to walk underneath the water would definitely suggest that this is being crafted for some sort of special, you know, some sort of special mining tool. Wow. The magic doesn't seem to be necessarily co uh, combat oriented, though it would be hard to say unless something was struck with it it does seem to have it's extremely well crafted and well balanced so it would be as fine as wow. any other weapon of its design okay. at least and do i get a sense of uh any sort of the magic is tainted towards good or evil maybe i'm not able to do that more of a cleric thing ah. i'd say it would be um hard to say however this enchant this style of enchanting items is more um, involves evil magic and dark magic as you um, Strodrake noticed those the runes on the ground that imply dark magic okay. so you can make the same implication that some kind of well, evil magic was used to create this okay yes um, because it's got some sort of evil taint to it I'm intended to, I'm, in, I'm more inclined to take it with us just so that it's out of the out of their hands but I'm also wondering now guys if this was crafted, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say that it'd probably take an amount of time to to fashion this something like this, something pretty important is located underwater somewhere that someone wants this to then be able to retrieve that whatever that might be, and I'd be inclined to try and find whatever that might be and. You know, if this if there's evil magic in this, odds are good that it's pretty bad whatever it's being was designed to find. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Something um, underwater. Yeah. That someone wants. Yeah. And I mean if they're gonna take the time to fashion something like this to find you know, to find it, it's gotta be pretty meaningful yeah and that's kind of scary to me well i want to keep it especially considering you know you know think of the what the sorts of things that have happened to the world or above us you know that big i called it a scar on on the on the ground you know oh, uh, hmm. this is sounding a, like, a, like a smaller version of whatever the titans would have done above you know it raises a point that Something could have been submerged underwater from all that water and ice being dispersed that someone would need this in order to find that, find whatever they're looking for. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which makes me much more inclined to take it with us because in our hands, it's out of their hands, right? Yeah, cool hammer too. Yeah. Yo, what would happen if we jumped off a building with this? Like, how fast would you go? <laughs> <clears throat> like, I'm the perfect guy to experiment with this thing. <laughs> oh, man. Go to the city of the three kingdoms. The hammer. I'm willing to let one of you just smack me with this hammer. I honestly am. Uh, I'm not going to. No. What? <laughs> I wouldn't don't, do that. Vincent, I don't want to know that bad yet. Vincent, yeah. you don't want to do it? You You want me to hit you with a hammer? Yes. Very much so. <laughs> Even if it kills me. All right. Woo! I guess yeah, Vincent looks quite concerned and moves to intervene. Gentlemen, gentlemen, perhaps 
we should wait till we have something uh, an adversary to use this on. Uh, no, please, we do it now. Mr. Vincent. No, we do it now. <laughs> Guys, as funny as it'll be to see you hit each other with this thing, I gotta agree with with her in this, Look, my in this brain, case. My brains may go splat across the wall. Considering there's be... no ale around us, this oh, is dear. not a good idea. Ale? <laughs> I have I have wine. If, you want no, wine? No, it's not the same. Okay. If if we were in a tavern and it was a safe place, I'd be like, go for it. But I have a cast. Listen, if we were in a if we, we were in a tavern, just fought a giant crayfish. <laughs> Yeah, uh, fair enough. I have a fair cast enough, scale with some with some nails that have been in there for like a week, but you know it may still be good. Just adds to the flavor. Mm. Yeah, it's rustic. Yeah, exactly. All right, you won't hit me with a hammer. It's all right. I, I understand. Just it. walked away, shaking her head at your guys' discussion here. <laughs> Kingston, what? Kingston, here, pick up. Hey. I take the hammer and I go to Kingston. Kingston, put this hammer in your mouth and just like, just hit me with it. Kingston takes the hammer and begins like trotting around as though ready to play. <laughs> <laughs> I take the hammer and I just toss it and fetch. Uh, when the hammer strikes the ground, uh, a rock beneath it just blasts apart. And it stands straight up, very well balanced. Kingston grabs it and runs back to you with it. Woo! Like <laughs> hammer, hammer. You're like a warg assisted Thor here. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, what have I done? Uh, I take it and I put it to the fashioned rope belt that I made for it. You can't give Silverado anything. You Look. should. <laughs> no, that's fine. Look, I got I got Kingston. As cool as Kingston is, I don't have anything magical, all right? I just want something. <laughs> um, we'll let you have are, your Sorry, were we taking are we taking a long rest here or just a short rest? A sh- short rest probably. Short rest? Okay. You want to sleep in here? For another um, crab to show up? No, not at all. Um so while we're while we're doing that, I will uh I'll pull out my loot and um I'll just uh, riffing and I'll in my mind, I'm just kind of um, seeing if going to see if I can respond to those voices that I had when we were at the, in the river and I'll just uh, sit against, sit against one of the rock walls and uh, riff on my, on my loot and just kind of um, talking, but not talking out loud and just, uh, Mm -hmm. just uh, say that, um, you know, uh, whoever you are, whatever, I don't know what we did to deserve your um, your grace, but thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us, let, letting us keep going, and um, whenever we can do to repay that that favor, I'll uh, I'll do that for sure. I, uh... As you are playing and sort of noodling around here on your lute, you begin to play a song that is not familiar to you. You only know it, that it is a song because you start to repeat the melody and the uh, counter melody that you're also playing at the same time, uh, finger picking here. And the song is very soothing. It almost seems to complement the sound of the river in the distance, the sound of the river that's also echoing off of the cavern walls here. And you, you get a sense of a voice uh, saying no, Xander, thank you, as you are thanking um, this being. You feel sort of a new uh, sense of power coming into yourself over the course of resting here and um, playing this music that seems to be coming from within you, though um, being discovered at the same time. Wow. Cool. So I just kind of, uh, just, just kind of trying to take it all in and think, think back to all the actions that, that might've led to this point and, and, uh, focus on, maybe focus on this song that I'm essentially learning out of nowhere. Um, so that I might be able to remember this in the future too. And then I'll just say, well, um, oh, I look forward to, uh, look forward to this journey together then in my mind, just talking to this voice that was responding to me. Um, 
Yeah, and just trying to exude a, a sense of, uh, um, what's the word, thankfulness and um, duty. Like, I feel like I have, I have something more to live up to now. You feel a sense of graciousness and um, acceptance and warmth. Nice. And then I'll just, yeah. Just to kind of take it in and in this rest and just um, just bask in it, really. Yeah, trying to try, kind of kind of being quiet on my own and just um, taking this all in, figuring out what's going on, and all at the same time, you know. Very good, very good. Maybe and maybe somehow I can work this into a song of rest as well while we're while we're while we're resting. That makes sense, definitely. Uh, so anyone that that hears while this is, hears me riffing while while this is going on, you'll heal heal seven hits. Very nice, very nice. So seven dies too. Yeah, same here. Over the course of this rest, Deathita has moved closer to the cave entrance. She's trying to stay hidden, but also trying to keep a point of view on the river crossing here. Brukoth awakens. He is in a great deal of pain, but somehow your music seems to soothe him. Awesome. Welcome back. If, yeah, anyone that's around, uh, would, they would benefit from the music as well, the Song of Rest. It's possible. I guess maybe even um, uh, Kingston might heal a bit if he did, if he needed. He'd be a dog, yeah. Well, guys, I am. What a time to be alive, huh? Yeah. Some crazy. Some Crabs, crazy. magic hammers, minotaurs, water spirits. Deathida beckons to whoever is nearest. Would that be Vincent? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Vince, Master Vincent, a moment. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, yes. What, says, what is it? Quietly, quietly. And she kind of beckons you closely. And she points across the river. In the distance, you see the two Minotaur come up and collect a small pile um, of things that look like trinkets and they kick the bodies of the hob the remaining hobgoblins into the river they look around the cavern one of them makes a clicking sound and gives another whistle similar to a whistle that you heard earlier um, they look around momentarily and you hear one of them grunt as they both just about face and return the way that they had come Sorry, this is the Minotaurs? Yes, those are the Minotaurs. They've come up, collected a small pile of goods, kicked the hobgoblin bodies into the river, uh, made some kind of signal, and then went back to where they were. <clears throat> okay. I'll make my way back to the back of the cave again and uh, let the guys know what I saw. Cool. Yeah, oh, like, yeah uh... so um, apparently that... Uh, that crab thing was their pet, and yeah, they came back. They 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 took some some trinkets off of the hobgoblins and threw them in the lake, and then they called for Krabby, who of course did not come. But then they just kind of made their way back up the cave. So, I don't know. Over the course of this rest, Deathida has found in her studies the name of this beast. It is a chul. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Forgive me. It's the first time I've used this monster. This is an amphibious beast with dark origins um, originally created to essentially seek out magical items for its owner. So it serves as sort of a, re a retriever of sorts and it must have sensed that's why I was very powerful the necklace. Exactly. Well, uh, how do we get out of here, guys? I mean, we gotta... I'm inclined to 
try and find our friends. Uh, maybe we should, I hate go to back. say go swimming, but maybe we need to go swimming. That the river takes us, take us um, further down. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like there was any points where we came from where someone could have gotten off and uh, essentially save themselves, right? It's This is the first point, these two. This is the first point. There's pretty rapid, or yeah, pretty rapid rapids taking the river this way. So, I mean, it's possible somebody's clutching a rock somewhere. They've been there for a couple hours now, if they yeah. are. Um, I have a question. Sure. The... Uh... The direction that this river is flowing, is it flowing in the direction that we were originally traveling? Yeah, I'm sorry. The map actually makes it look as though the river is going north, but it is traveling south. Cool. So okay. um, the waterfall so, area so that you... further away. Yeah, the part that you entered is towards the north. That's where the waterfall area is. And then uh, it's flowing south. Uh... Uh, how about we have Rolo check and see if there's anybody in that main cavern area, see if anyone's still holding on. Oh, yeah, that we can definitely do. And that's if not, great idea. and if not, because we just don't want to leave someone that's like hanging on for dear life, be like, well, all right, we're going for the other. See ya. Yeah. And then we can have Rolo scout out in the caverns yeah, as well. I'll, I'll call Rolo up and, um, I'll tell him, you know, just check down this direction. Whoa, um, where are we now, Master Vincent? I, do much, much different, much different here. I honestly have no idea. Oh. We got uh, sucked on, some, some lady talked us into going underwater, but like the water was frozen, and then we, then the water wasn't frozen, and then we got washed out into a cave, and then we fought some hobgoblins, and then we fought a crab. It's uh, been a nightmare, dude. Never trust a nymph, Master Vincent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a nymph, wasn't it? Hmm, I thought it was Perhaps. like a dryad, Perhaps. a dryad, or a uh, or God, what was the? Oh, not a water elemental. You know, you were still out and about when we were going down in there. You could have said something. But that's fine. Whatever. Listen, I need you to go down through here. Um, just check it out. See if there's any anybody, anything, uh, either creature or person or anything worth interest. And uh, and then just come back up and let me know what's going on. And I would suggest maybe go invisible when you go out there because, you know, this place is crazy, dude. This is crazy. This place is crazy. Rolo is winks crazy. out of out of sight and you hear whoa bit of trouble as he flies past the chul body and rollo is on his way now to do some reconnaissance for you silverado you have the hammer yes it's on my belt perfect all right because um... if, this, if this thing does some decent damage I can run up quick because I'm basically the only melee. I mean, you're melee as well, but are you pushing in a hammer and more hammer? Is it a warhammer or a, a great hammer? Or yeah, can a, I a even effectively hammer? wield this thing? That's another yeah, question. I, I don't think I don't. It's not really a monk's weapon. So, is it? It's not. A, I don't think it's a martial weapon. Uh, let's see what I've. I'm trained in simple, short sword, short bow, yeah, long I, I sword. I think it is a martial weapon. Long bow. If it's a martial weapon, I'll totally use it. But, you know, I may not. I, I don't think it's a simple weapon. We're looking at a warhammer oh, here. Yeah. Uh, warhammer? All right, I'll check if that's on the list. Yeah, no, I, think, I think warhammer is martial. Yes, yeah. it is. Yes. Woo! I got a weapon. Can you uh, use martial weapon? Can, can monks use martial weapons? Yeah, it's monks and martial. That's what, they're, that's what they do. Oh, no way. I always picture them as mostly like martial arts oriented, I guess, hand to hand combat for uh, combat for some reason. But a lot of martial arts is using weapons too, so that makes a lot of sense. I mean, like seven levels down the future, I would have my fist would be like doing like d10s and stuff. Yeah, you won't need any of this crap. Anyway. Yeah, I won't need this. It would be nice for now, but I don't need it in the future. 
Silverado, how many bottles of wine do you have left, and how were you able to keep them from breaking in this treacherous uh, river expedition? Well, I downed the last one uh, the previous night, and so now I have, if I remember correctly, I had my main one when I arrived to the farm, then, then Hopkins gave me four, and so I downed my original one, and now I'm on my... So I have four of them. Okay. And I imagine since they were a gift and not exactly something that is hardy, uh, I guess what I could do is pad them with my other pairs of pants and just it's like in my pack or wherever they are, just like pad them around some like clothing that I have laying around because I don't have anything. It's a good idea. Yeah, I don't want those bottles of wine to be broken, so I, I like that. <laughs> Dude, I, I think monks only get simple weapons and short swords. I don't think you. I don't think anyone can use that really. Any any yeah. of us? Oh no, really? I, I'll, I'll double check it real quick. It's okay. Oh, I'm looking at it right here. It might just be functional. Yeah, it might or, just be uh, a functional. Yeah, you know, for whatever function it can serve. A utility. So it's still, it's still, still uh, it'll be useful. Yeah. I and didn't really picture any of you hand. as hammer wielders, but <laughs> no, not yet. Anyways, you guys can come up with some crazy ideas, but not that yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have, you have sorry. no idea what kind of multi-class might be coming so, down. The sorry road. to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> you have no clue. <laughs> and Vincent, when it comes to Rolo, uh, no, thank uh, No worries, Xander. Thanks for uh, checking that out. No but uh, yeah, no worries. Vincent, when it comes to Rolo, have you just sent him to gather intelligence and then he'll return to you with, uh, news of what he's found yeah okay very good and then do you all have anything else you you're uh interested in doing or are you just basically kind of uh, at this point taking a rest sitting around recouping probably needs a good yeah. bit of deal a good a good deal of that to happen yeah and then eventually you got to figure out if we're gonna i'm not at all i'm not really very keen on going the direction that the minotaurs went it's funny that I feel like the river looks like the better option. I just worry because the river is going completely opposite direction that we need to go. Yeah. And now that I know that I'm, you know, carrying a nuke around my neck, uh, that's basically a, a giant bullseye. I'd kind of like to get that where it needs to be. Yeah. As and not, to as possible. not to mention there's creatures in here that are searching for things like that. And apparently now, yeah. Shame. So I'm going to reveal areas of the map that Rolo describes to you, okay? Okay. All right. So further down the cavern, the river meets the rock wall and goes, well, it's already underground, but it goes into a cave that has no airspace above it. There's a southern passage here. Um, where all of these caverns seem to intersect and <clears throat> below it is kind of a forest of fungus of gigantic proportion. There's a statue at the end of this um, what seems to be kind of a garden area is how Rollo describes it um, a mushroom garden and then there is um, the northern passageway which will lead you to or leads Rolo to a room that has cells and cages in it as well as tables and two minotaur are in this room as well and then the southeast tunnel he says goes for a little ways and he didn't go to the end of it. Hmm. Okay. So. <clears throat> so we can't go. So we can't take the river. No. And if we do, we. Well, die. that's yeah. That's that's just out. That out is the death. One person with the hammer could. We don't yeah. know how far down that cave goes or how long the hammer That's right, lasts, too. So. That's right, too. I have rope so we can um, take... We can use the rope that I've tied before for uh, me to test the hammer and I can 
then someone can use the hammer and tie it off on the other side so they can use it as a type of pulley. <laughs> you know, so someone can hold on to it and not get swept away by the current. Mm -hmm. Or just do a daisy or, chain and or, someone hold the hammer. Or we could try the southeast path. Yeah. Rolo offers to, to fly ahead and scout out the southeast path for you if you like. That that would be great. Yes. Did did he mention anything um if if the Minotaur has had anyone any any uh prisoners or anything? Oh, I apologize. Um <clears throat> he did mention that there are maybe a dozen prisoners. No, oh, crap, our people might be in there. Or people in general. After oh, some yeah. time, Rolo will return, and he reports, It's a oh, long boy. cave. Comes hey. to a door. door. He says, The door is locked from the other side. Yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. Rescue mission number two. Like, if we're going to go take on two Minotaurs, though, we're going to have to, like, sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I need, I need, uh, I'm, I'm, my resources have been depleted. Yeah. I'm, I'm no good to you guys like this. Hey, uh, I can do four hours and keep watch for whoever rests, so. It's okay. on the table. Yeah, I think that might be our best bet. If we, are you guys up for trying to save these prisoners? I am a hero, so I will do it. I, I feel I feel like that's uh, I feel like I, I feel a need to do that. I feel it's like I feel like it's like what you guys want to do, so I'm on board. Yay! Peer yeah. pressure. <laughs> Sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> no. No, and I mean that. I mean that in the best possible way. Like I'm down. Let's do it. Okay. Right on. Right. All right. On. Cool. Good with that. That could be a dangerous so, uh, attitude to have, though. <laughs> we'll see. Well, let's go back to where this hammer was being kept mm. and mm. do a longer rest. I agree with that. Okay. All right. Let's do that. I will eat some of the tasty bread that Miss Hawkins gave us. I just yes. take out uh, whatever wine bottle I'm on and start drinking and offer it to anybody that wants one. I remember you having downed one since we left Hawkins Farm, so I think you'll have three left, right? Three that I had my original. I had oh. five, and I was drinking the one, and he gave me four or something from what I remember. And I so, remember you finishing a bottle before the Battle of Hawkins Farm, and then you finished a bottle... Uh, Bonding with your your new pet ward, mm. if I remember correctly. Yes, so I am on my third bottle now. I got two left after this one. Sounds good. The wine is delicious. And would I want some? Mm, good wine. Yeah, okay. You want to go to... Oh, here we go, finally. <laughs> I'm going to... Um... I'm going to take out a, uh, some of my rations and I'm going to call uh, Rolo onto my, onto my, like my shoulder and I'm going to offer him some if he wants any of it. Ah, Master Vincent, we seem to be coming friends, but no, no, thank you. I mean, I don't blame you. It tastes like crap. I just, you know, I prefer to be something nice. else. It's probably, you know, you wouldn't like what I like. We'll say that. Hey man. This is all. Is this all through his head? This is a tell. No, we're chatting. No, oh, we're you're just, just chatting. Chatting out in the air. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Dude, uh, I don't know. You want like souls or something? <laughs> I'll check out a bit of this crab. I think and he like flies over to start drinking from the this giant crab creature's broken claws. Okay, so he, he likes gook. He's into that, some gook for dinner. Look, <laughs> that man knows what he wants, all right? Mm. I will, I'll will i telepathically to uh, Rolo say, hey, should we, uh, should we take some of that to go? Rolo uh, laughs a bit 
and breaks off one of the smaller claws and kind of waves it at you, Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> I turn to the other dwarves who, who this is just such a new thing to him. Like, eh, don't worry, it's normal. This happens all the time. You want some wine? <laughs> Uh, Brukoth says, give me some of that, please. And there you go. Takes the bottle, takes a huge swig, and uh, just groans in pain. Oh, I would say it. no to you taking that big of a swig, but I would be a hypocrite. And I take it, <laughs> I take a swig. As, said, as we're sitting... Sorry, go ahead. He was just going to say, we better drink it while we can, friend. Oh, I got two more bottles of the stuff. Don't worry. <laughs> As we're as we're sitting and chilling out, I, I'll uh, kind of roll up next to Vincent. So I, I, I gotta I gotta ask about the bat wing shaped elephant in the room. <laughs> I oh. mean, we've seen some weird shit in our time, you, but dude, uh... talk about taking all of the cake. <laughs> you saw that, huh? You can ah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I think our parents saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> and I mean, oh, you don't, uh, you don't have to explain anything because obviously we've come this far. You would have killed us if you were going to. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you this much right now. Um, I am by no means or stretch of the imagination good but i'm not bad it's not evil i am a lot of conflicting things i'm a pawn in a very large game of chess right on and uh this game's been played for a long time so the pieces are very scratched up the pawns especially right on um so it's not something i like to show off uh it doesn't typically happen unless you know we get cornered and one of our friends is snatched up in a Hey. Crab monsters claws hey, man, des- around desperate the times, ball. right? Desperate times. Yeah, and then he smacked the dog across the I mean, I'm not like I said, I'm not good, but that's just bad. That's just evil. Hell yeah. <laughs> so oh, no. just yell from the campfire. So I I reacted and my uh my form sort of showed itself. Well, we've been together this long, and uh, surprise! <laughs> yeah, just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you're a bad guy. <laughs> exactly. That's Two all I'm saying. Up me. Two thumbs up for me. <laughs> um, hey, it, it's uh, we can we can roll with it. I just I just had to clear the air. Yeah, no, I'm not <laughs> like I'm not up. like a I'm not like a demon or anything like that. It's it's right. it's just a and uh, it's a thing. Well, I mean, you're a good guy in our books, man. Not, not many bad guys do the things that we've been doing. So, I mean, there's there's something going mm-hmm. on, and you know, something's amiss. What's that? Something's amiss. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're we're just want you to know that we're here. If you're if there are these inner demons, we can help. We're here. We can help you fight them. We'll fight them together. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about your newfound fangled powers or whatever you got. It's <laughs> it's going to be a okay in the end, and if it's not, well, you had a good run. So, I mean, what? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> and with that note, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll uh, try and try and get a bit of sleep if I can. Pull out my my wet blanket. <laughs> Literally, uh, all all our stuff is wet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're probably cold, so cold. And uh, I'll take I'll take uh, the rest that I can get. I just um, I I take my last final sip and I uh 
put the cork back in and I put it away. I take out the hammer and I just kind of like, is there a campfire? Cause I just said that just as flavor, but did we make a campfire or is there not a campfire? I think only in the case that we wouldn't want to draw attention to those minotaurs are so close that we probably might not have a fire in this case. Let's run an enclosed cave. Yeah. All right. I pictured right. everybody sitting around a fire too. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, but, I know. No, I yeah, did too. So continue image, without yeah. the fire. <laughs> I think right. normally we would, but uh, I think in this case, especially like you said, because there's nowhere for the air to go. I just, cast, I just cast light. There. I just cast light on some stones and a pile in the middle. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Their budget campfire. Uh, I just kind of just sit and like right here, leaning against a. Um, a stalagmite or a stalag whatever the other one's called and right. <laughs> with the hammer in my hands just uh, taking a trance hoping that it'll make me less cold oh we need to figure out somebody needs to take watch while he's that is yeah one of you needs to at least take watch we gotta cover yeah, I can, four I can hours do that. watch I can uh, do that yeah, I can take a shift too yeah Definitely oh, and Strodrake can also take a shift you okay. guys are fine. You can sleep fully. I'm just saying, I just need someone to cover me while I'm sleeping, and then I can get all of us. Well, yeah, that's what we're saying. We're going to cover four hours, and then you can cover the other four. That's it. Five. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's let's get to sleep, gang. Let's sleep. Woo! And hope nothing comes in, <laughs> comes after us while we're sleeping. Yeah. Indeed. Here's to open. And you all are quite cold, except perhaps for Silverado, who has had enough wine to warm himself. I think it's the hammer. Over the course of the night, Vincent, you have a vivid dream. Your Uh, wing is being ripped out. You feel intense pain. Um, Your view is very close to the shoulder, but suddenly the perspective shifts Uh, panning outward and soon you are far above the landscape the scar on your shoulder takes the shape of the great tear in the land that was caused by the titan's fury and when you awaken in the morning your scar is burning it's not ominous that is where we will end the game for this evening and we'll pick up the adventure again next yeah. week. Wow. <laughs> okay. GG's everybody. Um, yeah, ooh, that was great, guys. Yeah. Now you have to worry about that for a week. There you go. Great. <laughs>